their debrief, questions, things like that towards the end. Um, we do have the latest adaptation, correct, for SARS for NORCAP? If nobody doesn't, now's the time to go download it and import that stuff and get that straight out because I don't want it to hear in the middle or something. It's like, oh, that MVA was off. That mapping was off. I never knew that. Or, oh, why is it beeping at me? It's like, oh, that shouldn't happen. It's like happening to everybody, right? So now's the time to do it. Anybody here is a VRC user? Tell me now. Okay. I think NS is, but he's muted. Right. That's fine. He's not part of the, uh, the student group class here. You can monitor if he wants, but. All right, cool. I'll go live here in just a second and uh, show you some of this. So please be patient with me. I I don't use live that often. So if I do fuck up, sure, laugh at me if you want. But please be patient. And I don't know how to use Euroscope. Yeah, we'll see that in a bit. Um, how do you get them to turn right versus turn left? Uh, when you drag the heading, drag it just by a bit so it starts easing them to the left first before you... Gotcha. Like, uh, and using the simulator training dialogue to do that? Uh, yes. Okay. And then will they automatically descend via? Should be. If not, there should be a ribbon route on top of it. And... Uh, yeah, the roots are in there. I don't see. I don't know if they're going to descend. It should be tied to an altitude. As how? Uh, I don't see altitudes in some of them. I don't see altitudes in any of them. Right. What's the map number for this uh, area E stars? Uh, I don't know the top of my head. Map 45. All right, so a little bit of area E coverage. I know, that's, again, it's going to be a repeat here for most of y'all. Um, area E, we have five areas at uh, NARCAL, right? So we got, and how the training starts, we got uh, a, B, C, D, E, and then E split up between uh, between E Nevada, Reno, right? And just area E by itself, or you can call it area E California. And uh, when you go further, it's individually split up by airports and airport complexes, right? And what we see here is outlined in orange here. This is known as the uh, Mather complex and the Sacramento complex down here, which uh, is under our jurisdiction in area E. Um, we're, although we're housed under NorCal areas, in a tracon itself is um, 
divided by a specialty. You can think of area of specialty and we might do things a little bit different uh, compared to uh, other areas in terms of scratch pads or exit routing. You'll notice that when you read the SOP and you get to the section of area E, right? You should be familiar with those with the ex exit routings and entry routings. We do those differently. Otherwise, uh, generally in terms of our equipment for stars, for example, um, procedures for departure procedures, how we treat um, MVAs and how we descend people, climb them out, et cetera, should be very um, fluid throughout the whole um, facility as NorCal as a whole. Um, sector, if you read the SOP in, in the beginning part in the under general, right, where it talks about the airport complexes and whatnot, uh, we talk about control. That's very important, right? Control and uh, point out handoffs, those procedures. Uh, you guys got to understand that concept now, right? Before ever moving on anywhere else in, in the radar world. And even um, in tower, there was a little bit of, of the word control in there. And what control is basically is uh, if an aircraft is not in your airspace yet or is outside of your boundaries, whether altitude or or outside of your boundaries wise and they come in or not into your airspace yet. So I'm being repetitive. You request control from the um, transferring sector so that you can move that aircraft and do what you want with it, descend them, climb them, so on and so forth. However, in our SOP, aircraft within NorCal sectors, once you receive them from the transferring controller, you can automatically um, descend them to the base of of uh, their receipt of the transferring controllers airspace and you can vector them as much as you want is is that kind of clear I know in, in Sacramento we don't have any high altitude above us right it's all service 19 in this area divided uh, along this uh, latitude over here otherwise uh, if, for example, you later on go down to area A and area B, where there's sectors above you, it gets more co complicated. So it hands off to you, you can legally to send them down to the base of their altitude because it would traverse some, uh, somebody else's airspace if you don't coordinate with them. Right? Does that make any sense? Anybody don't, does not understand that concept? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Basically. And you're, you're responsible for that so that, you know, when you're on the network or training later on, I know that concept should be one of the, your, uh, should be your natural gut type of thing. It's just, it's just like, you know, the word clear for takeoff. It should not be cleared, um, clear takeoff. It should come out that naturally, right? In terms of handoffs, point outs and stuff, I know you, we can miss out on those, but the in terms of control and, and spacing and stuff, you should be able to memorize that. Nothing too hard, right? And another thing about um, spacing, when you, for aircraft, the minimum lateral uh, spacing, what standards do we use? Does anybody know? And how does it differ? Plane to plane or? Plane yeah, plane to plane. To plane. So we're, we're not talking about altitude, we're talking about radar separation, as I should specify, radar separation, between two aircraft, same altitude, same type, same everything. What, what, what? Three, three miles, right? This is forty miles of the radar. Right, and we we treat that in stars. This is how it differs between VRC and stars users. Is you'll see if they're within that forty miles. Thanks for bringing that, Alex. Is if they're outside of the adapted forty miles of any radar, they will. The uh, you'll notice in the stars the. I forgot the term. It's. Uh, the positions, or not the position symbol, the, uh, anyone? Isn't it like um, transistor? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's the radar target itself is, it's not filled in. It's it's yeah. considered ghost, right? And you'll notice that when, when the center hands you or anybody hands you an aircraft outside of your airspace and they're far away, we would have to utilize five miles, right? And I, want you, I don't want you to overthink that. I was like, oh, shoot, I've been using, I, I thought those places were supposed to be three the whole time. No, All right? So most, because our radars are are very close together, right? We, we're using McClellan's radar. We're using Sacramento uh, long range radar. We're using Beale's terminal radar. We're using Stockton, a little bit of all of that. We fuse them together. Uh, well, I guess we use multi here. That's why you have 
a large area with an area E of not being afraid of being outside of that 40 mile range, right? And most other Tracons as well, it, it's built to be that way. It's a structure where, you know, radars are, are adapted in and um, it, it should be that way so that there's no point in, in your airspace that you're outside of that 40 mile range unless it's way beyond your airspace. That's another thing, right? Um, so three miles, right? That's your basic radar separation. However, it gets neat when, it, uh, what if you have a heavy now? What if they have the aircraft in front of that uh, aircraft is now heavy? Well, what's the radar separation, right? And that that all depends. It gets a little bit more complex now. It's not it's not 0.65 of what you think like heavy in front of large. Oh, five miles, easy. L heavy behind or heavy behind heavy, four miles, easy. It's no longer that. It's recat separation, right? You probably heard the term once or twice, but that's how we apply it here. Um, if you've been using normal separation, then you're safe, right? But recat, what recat does is in recently, past couple of years, they figured they, you know, wake turbulence has always been a thing where they're studying, uh, constantly studying, scientists are constantly studying wake turbulence and, and reevaluating the, the safetyness out of it. And also at the same time, you can't always be too safe, right? You got to think about being efficient. So then they thought, oh, if there's a 767, which is a heavy, is in front of a 747, which is also a heavy, I should not be using, utilizing four miles in trail. That's, that's a little bit too much. It's excessive, right? So logic is that if you think of it this way, you have a smaller heavy, that's, aircrafts are now divided into six categories, right? A through F. And A is super. B is a big heavy. Think of that, big heavies. C is the smaller heavies. Ds are your larger, seven threes. Uh, E's are your, uh, did I say heavy? I'm sorry, uh, large. And then E is smaller, large. F is your small. So what does that mean? So A is your supers, right? Your A380s, your Antonov 225s would be, be that category. B's would be 747, uh, 400s, uh, 777, any 777, um, uh, A330s, would be in there, uh, so on and so forth. And then you have your B, which is your smaller category ones, like your wide body, two engine ones, and maybe A330 might fit in there. I, I've got to study, right? So the 767s, for example, would be stuck in there. And then you have uh, what used to, you remember, 757s would be their own category that you would be stuck in uh, either C or D, I believe. Again, I got to restudy that. And then D, you have your 737s. E would be your smaller jets, right? Like your little Honda jets, your Premiers, your Lear jets, so on and so forth. F, your uh, piston, uh, reciprocating, turboprop, things like that would fall under there. So what? how does that affect you when it comes to recap separation? It means if you have a smaller, and I got to Bring this up so you guys can see as well. Quick question. Go for it. This is while you're talking about that. Um, what about like a dash eight? Because I think that's like a special turbo prop. It doesn't really fit what in certain situations, right? Would that still be a F? That would be. Uh, I can find that for a second here. Reference, if you guys reference the 7360.1, uh, we're on the Echo version now, and it's always changing because people are making new aircrafts, right? But just try to stick with whatever is the latest. DH8D. It is D. How do I know that? Search up DH8D. Class is a fixed wing. Engine type two turboprop IKO wake turbulence category is a medium for these are your re, uh, recap versions. So we're currently recap 2.0, I believe. And then this is the future of recap. So yeah, I know it's, it gets kind of crazy. 
And then you have your SRS for same runway separation for you tower dudes. Uh, lasso number, not too familiar with that. And then the uh, manufactured model that can be derived from the dash eight. You have the dash eight, it can be named this one, so on and so forth. Right. So what we're looking at is it is a considered a, a D aircraft, right? Even though it's a turbo prop and whatnot, but it's categorized as large enough and can generate enough uh, weight with its uh, heaviest. And that's another thing too, behind the whole wake recap thing is it's taking the maximum takeoff weight that the aircraft is capable of. And uh, that's how it gets put in, into its respective categories. And you can, if you want to read more, you can read more on this document, the 7110-659, I guess we're on the Charlie version now. The whole background of that, I'm not gonna go too much into that. There, it's Towers use it. Everybody basically under NorCal airspace is using wake recap. That's all you need to know. The table's here for you guys to reference, right? So very straightforward. B behind A needs five. B behind B needs three, right? It, it reverts back to your your minimum radar separation, which is three miles, right? So if the logic is if you have a smaller heavy behind it, a larger heavy, then that's when you where you need to utilize for so on and so forth. And it increases, right? Not exponentially, it goes up linear, uh, linear. So Sort of easy to remember. If not, you can print that out, write that out, whatever you want. Question. Small regional jets would probably be in E. Um, what are the what are the JO sixty three? This is the sixty three or seventy three sixty point one. And the other one is the uh, seventy-one ten point sixty or six fifty-nine Charlie. Okay, thanks. See, it varies. So it depends on which uh, wake recat you are referencing, right? Gotcha. And now that that kind of exposed me was I got to verify now. NorCal's are they a one point five or two point oh? Right? I know for sure we're not in the CWT one because that's very new. There, are I believe, only one or two facilities using it, like probably Memphis or something, where they have a lot of FedEx planes going in and whatnot, so they have to recategorize that. Anyways, questions from that? Okay. Um, so for some of you who, you know, could use this as a refresher or if it's uh, new to you guys, cool. Area function study. So we're part of NorCal now, right? You guys are starting, are starting off your radar training Unfortunately, in my opinion, at area E um, of NorCal, so you're being thrown to the walls basically in terms of complexity and 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 the world of of going down the shitter. Basically, before it would be starting out at Fresno and not some of you are familiar, uh, where it was a little bit more easier. Anyways, area function study. So NorCal uh, be able to, in general terms, to describe the functions of each NorCal area and list the complexes contained there. So this is a study guide material that'll uh, that is sent up there in the zip folder. Area A, general overview, works arrivals and departures in the San Jose and Monterey complexes. So area A, that encompasses this area down here. Area B, works arrivals into San Francisco, coordinates arrivals slash departures at Half Moon Bay with area D, depending on routing and bay configuration. Just down here. Right. Well, we have the general west plan, southeast plan. You guys know what that is. Area C uh, works arrivals into Oakland, arrivals, departures at Hayward, depart uh, during uh, west plan configuration, works arrivals, departures to Stockton, Modesto complexes, uh, works Livermore departures from both runways during San Francisco uh, west and runway seven during San Francisco east. Area D for departures works all the san francisco departures or san francisco and oakland departures also livermore departures from way two five when we're east plan and hayward and san carlos operations during east plan as well area e this is where we're at works arrivals and departures into sacramento may their complexes and the reno area also works traffic into or out of the adjacent traffic uh, travis complex so this part right here we don't see a lot on the virtual network and sometimes we do that's why we we train for it right and even though we don't have a, a lot of agreement really with with any virtual 
USAF or any of those groups there, that airspace still exists. So how we interpret it is in Travis's airspace, the top half from this line here up here should be worked by the center. Everything down here should be sort of worked by us or however it's coordinated, right? And this would belong to Area E, uh, technically. Right, the flows. Uh, general flows, you guys should be familiar with that as well, right? Uh, again, this you for Sacramento National Airport, you have the Tudor arrivals coming uh, from the north. This is a pilot nav uh, slash hybrid um, star. This is not an RNAV star, so there is no descent via, right? You will be receiving that from Oakland Center. Descending to 12,000, right? Doesn't And whenever you read that letter of agreement, again, in between NorCal and the center, descending to 12,000 with an arrow means that aircraft could be here at 200 descending 12, which is kind of a shitty situation, but that's still descending to 12 versus at our border at 12. That's where the difference is. Um, you And that's both if we're north or south. Uh, you have the slammer arrivals uh, descending via with a runway transition already assigned from the center, right? 1-6 transition, 3-4 transition. And you guys will be refining which runway to be expecting. Expect already 3-4 left, 3-4 right. And if we're landing north, 1-6 left, 1-6 right. If we're landing south. And usually it's always going to be sick of one runway that's advertised on the ATIS, right? So it's going to be 16 right, or it's going to be 3-4 left, usually. Um, then you have the Sutter arrivals coming from the southeast here, descending via first received by Area C over here, right? Area C receives them. Uh, basically, they just give them the altimeter, hands them off to you early, hopefully. You take them down, give them the runways, give them all that stuff. It's not Area C's responsibilities, if I'm correct, if I remember correctly, to be assigning that runway in the first place. Um, if they're nice, they would even get that aircraft to report the ATIS for you, and sometimes they'll put that on the scratch pad for you to see. Uh, you get oceanic arrivals here via point radius and then direct usually to uh, the Sacramento National Airport, descending to seven, I believe. That's already coordinated out with Travis. Um, and that's your, your your basic main flows, I believe. I haven't forgotten anything. Oh, you're, sorry, you got your Concord arrivals coming from the bay here too, right? Concord two-star coming up this way. Usually received at uh, 11 over Travis's airspace because they own service of 10 up there. And um, you take them from over here and you descend them down. What else? And then you have a bunch of other miscellaneous airports here to deal with, right? You got uh, your class deltas, Sacramento Executive, Mather, uh, and then your class two class Charlie's, Beale and Sacramento. And then the rest are mix of class golf class, Echo, airspace. Uh, your letter of agreements, we don't have any letter of agreements established between the towers and us. It's basically in the SOP of the tower. So then what we're missing out really is the handoff procedures and how we deal with VFR uh, departing and, uh, and arriving. I'm, I know that's on a lot of you guys' mind when you're working these scenarios or you've seen it before. It's like, wait, how, how does the approach control? What if somebody calls up with flight following or they've been on flight following, they come into these airports, how do I deal with them? Right? Do I let the tower deal with them or do I essentially sequence them out? That's a good question. And I'll refer to the um, what the real world does. Uh, we're not going to be doing 100% of what they do, but um, in terms of handoff procedures and VFR stuff, I, I believe it's important. Because in the SOP currently, what you have is just IFR departures coming out on certain headings or uh, certain headings with these class deltas and sometimes with international as well as well as, as well as the SIDS, right? The river cat and the foothills two departures and whatnot coming out. So our standard operating procedure here in NorCal is that we hand off our data blocks arriving to the towers themselves, right? We because they have a star display as well, right? So we hand off to them. We don't I know some VRC users in the past, you've seen when you were at the tower, they dropped the data block. We don't do that. We, we either hand them off 
So there's two possible or three possible ways. It's either uh, you hand them off, they keep them all the way to landing, or you keep the data blocks, which is sometimes down in San Francisco, you'll notice, until they land and then the tower just quick looks you. Right? That's just that's the automated way of giving information, arrival information to the towers. Right? You have that versus your your uh, verbal way. I'm sorry, I missed out a third one. The third one is what we don't simulate here, but then they would force a data block and it's not gonna be a handoff. It's like, here you go, you take it type of thing. Um, but we don't simulate that here. So technically there's only two. Uh, so that versus uh, manual coordination, right? So at some towers, they don't have a stars display. Um, they only have uh, a FIDO, for example, uh, which means they're their printer system, right? So they would receive that flight strip on the aircraft knowing that arrival is inbound. And sometimes they don't even have a FIDO. So then you're passing that information inbound. So it's basically, uh, let's say Sacramento National Airport doesn't have a FIDO, right? We'd, we'd say Sacramento uh, or Capital Tower, um, Elkhorn inbound. And then you'd say the call sign, the aircraft type, and the airport estimate for the ILS, for example. But then since we have, we're luckily we have automation always, we pass, it's all contained in the data block, right? We have that as a scratch pad. We know the aircraft's call sign and type aircraft, so on and so forth. So even for IFR arrivals, you hand over the data block to the Correct. Team? Yep. Okay. And then this would be an LOA item as well, where it's, we don't have it here, is when the letter of agreement of when we switch these aircraft over. Usually, the uh, rule of thumb is about seven miles away from the airport. Right. If it's an IFR arrival, it's usually marked on your uh, on your video map, right? You see these tick marks right here. Usually, that's the final perch fix, which is around seven miles away from the airport. That's when the communication change occurs. Um, other coordination stuff. Let's say we have a VFR departure coming out and whatnot. That's already uh, either automatic scratch pad or the tower puts a scratch pad in of, of what they're doing. And you'll notice that as well when you work the towers down in the bay. If an aircraft's doing a, a bay tour, for example, they put two ER in there. Next rule of thumb of scratch pad usage. This is supposed to be standard operating procedures, but it's not. And but then it's generally across all the areas. And you'll notice why I'll mention scratch patches a lot is because it needs to be uniform, right? The whole point of a scratch pad is for two facilities or two sectors, whatever it may be, understands what that scratch pad means. If we're all using our own thing, right? V6R, for example, sure, that's that's pretty easy to understand. The visual's one six, right? They just drop the first number. But then if we're not utilizing that consistently, then it's not transparent throughout everybody else and not everyone's gonna understand it. That's why it needs to be standard operating procedures. So usually when an aircraft is landing to a runway that is published in the ATIS, for example, let's say Sacramento is advertising the ILS and visual approach one six right. You technically don't have to put anything in the scratch pad because it's understood that they're gonna be landing one six right doing either the ILS or the visual. You can though, remember the words may, right? You may do that. You don't have to do it. You, 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 it's not like you shouldn't or you should do it, but you may do it. Um, but if they're doing anything other than that, that's where you have to put in the scratch pad. And I'll show you how that scratch pad will work in area E versus other areas. Uh, that's a general overview, I guess. And I kind of babbled on about uh, RORCAL procedures that you guys probably do know. Uh, questions from that? All right, very good. Um, everyone, please log into Sweatbox. And how we're going to do this is everybody in Discord. So we have, let's see, seven, seven people on here. Um, seven people. So we're going to go. First, per, I'll be logging as mentor. The first person should be logging on as SMF underscore one. 
So that would be Alex, you'd be SMF underscore one. Anthony, your SMF underscore two, so on and so forth. Hopefully this works out correctly. And then uh, we're going to be running a swipe box session. Dom? Yeah. You want to talk very briefly about yeah. how, the, how much of the uh, shit show is? I'm no, sorry. How the, the, the rundown list and the rolling calls work uh, in this area? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, so the rundown list uh, is used in our area, at least, by all the towers. Uh, what, what is a rundown list? Some of you might ask. So the rundown list is basically telling your departure controller, which is you, right? Remember when you were working the tower, is, uh, vice versa, you're basically telling the departure controller, hey, this plane's coming to you, right? Um, and well, that would be in a form of, I'm sorry, that would be in the form of a rolling call. However, uh, a rundown list is basically like a, a release, a non-verbal release. That's an automated way to uh, release an aircraft. We don't have that, unfortunately, in VSTARS, and it's frustrating, right? It's pretty important that it should be adapted. Um, how would that work in the real world? Basically, you type in the call sign, it comes into a list, one of these lists, and it's flashing at the departure controller. And then you would see that. And usually it's accompanied by the call sign, sometimes a call sign and aircraft type, and then like a, a little scratch pad right next to it saying what the aircraft is doing, like a shorthand saying, like, for example, F. And that for a for Sacramento International would mean oh foothill departure. That's that's how you would know. Um, and and sometimes the order does matter. Sometimes uh, it depends on the tower to, to the to the approach controller. Sometimes the order does matter of of if they're short of the runway and they're going to get released. Or sometimes it's just a general or uh, it just gets put in there, flashes at you, and then you suppress it. They would see it suppressed. That means they get to release the aircraft. And that's how it worked non verbally. We don't have that, unfortunately. So what we do is just uh, via text, right? If you want to get an aircraft release, we're, we're used to that, right? It's either verbally or non-verbally. Uh, non uh, sometimes during the events, you'll notice you send out uh, a, a rundown, for example. And you can format it as it should be an alias that we should have, but I don't think we have it as a rundown list. You don't have to say request release. It'd just be, you know, this aircraft call sign and what generally what he's doing. Foothill 2 departure, for example. That tells me as a departure controller or as you guys, hey, this guy's coming to me on a foothill departure. Coming off 1 6, obviously. Um, Main am I missing anything? To have a rolling call, right? Ah, yeah. So this is substituting. this is substituting for a verbal rolling call. Right. So rolling calls, we, uh, we, you guys do remember, uh, what a rolling call or how many types of rolling calls there is, right? Or the different types of rolling calls. You guys should know this from your tower training and a little bit of approach training as well. Yes. No. Answer. Yeah, answer. Verbal. Right. Verbal. Strips. Strips. Right. And then I believe you can also text them as well. Right. And that's your automated sort of, right? Right. Yeah. Good. Uh, ships, obviously, we don't have, we can push ships to people. We don't have a scanner. We don't have a drop tube. So that constitutes as that. Um, what else? So then now in the perspective of radar control, why is this so important? For you as a tower, you just knew, oh, I just had to do it. I don't know. I just got to tell the departure that this guy's coming off. So I'm surprised him or something. But then you as a radar controller, how is this important to you guys? Because it's a... It's a form of identification. Yeah. Correct. So with that, a form of uh, radar identification, which uh, which type of radar identification? Secondary or primary? It's primary. Primary. Anybody that thought it was secondary, please say so now. Good. OK. Wow, look at that. Um, so yeah, so then in this simulation, we're going to be texting you departures, basically. And uh, treat it as a rolling slash uh, release or whatever, however you feel. All right, let me log on now. I should be logging on shortly. If you're primed up, deprime. prime.
if you guys can do me a favor, this is a technique, right? I, I used to be just like all of you guys at one point using VRC as well, right? Is try not name of the game here is try not to scroll in and out zooming in and i know it depends on everybody has a different uh screen right resolution wise and oh i have a laptop and the, i understand that but try not to uh zoom in and out because that decreases your scanability and uh your ability to yeah basically just scan and and have you're, you're basically tunnel visioning and you're forgetting to come back out basically so keep it centered in a way where you can see all of your space. Mind you guys, you guys are both working. Uh, you guys are working both airspaces today. We're in a one six configuration south plan, right? Um, and so keep it centered where you where you guys can see it. Not too close, not too far, far enough so that you can take handoffs and see about you know five to ten miles outside of your borders. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you have to zoom to see where the final approach fix is and, and shit like that please do, but then try not to pan too much, right? And, and see how that helps. And I know it's gonna be a hard habit to break, but um, see how that would help your guys, with, uh, your guys with your scan and data block management. Another note of data block management, I don't know if this is covered or not. So in terminal wise, and this should have occurred to you guys in tower as well, when you're talking, when an aircraft is in your airspace, if you have tags on them, they should be a full data block, right? Even if it's a point out, you should re retain, per the point 65, retain a full data block up until they reach, in our case, half a mile outside of our airspace, right? Or one and a half, depending yeah. if it goes in the other way, right? Then it could become a limited data block. And then when it's a frequency change, you can just click on them once more, it becomes green, right? We remember that. And that's data block management. Basically, whites are talking to me are on frequency, greens are not. Limited data blocks are not in my airspace. Simple enough to remember, right? Uh, anything else I forgot? Who wants to go first? I should before that. There I only see three. We're talk about on. map management on V Stars unless we already oh, know that. Okay. Yeah. Actually, before that, who are we missing? Not to mention what uh, radar sites. Has anybody in here never used V-Stars up until today? Oh, that's good. I'm basic, I'm basic bitch at it, though. Don't worry. We're going to iron that out uh, through a couple sessions because it's going to force you to learn some tools here. Um, I've got Doug's thing up where he's got like, the maps listed. Yep. That's yeah, good. that's helpful. Who who are we missing? Uh, sound off. Who are we missing? That's supposed to be logged on right now. One thing I I'm should... confused, Dominic. Yeah. That fly, they, on that um airspace map. So you got right down the bottom there. You got a uh, eight thousand to one nine zero on the airspace map. What's that about? Eight thousand one nine zero. On the bottom, it's. Uh, no He's talking it's about the shelf between Salty and Comanche. Yep. Are we referencing the SOP? I'm sorry. That's just part of the. Are you guys ah, using ah, the VATSIM uh, adjusted for ZOA VATSIM sectors one, or are you using the real no, we're just talking, real one? We're, we're talking yeah, about. I'm using the other one. See, that is another question I actually had because I saw that. Yeah. Um, what's the VATSIM one? What's the difference? No, no, no. We're, there's no VATSIM one that differs than what we're using now in terms of area E, so we'll, we'll keep it as is. So the eight to 19 that we're talking about that here like what's the what's the question again i'm sorry ante what Wait, what is that because you said that, um it's surface to 19 the whole way through correct and yes i'm wrong in that or i guess you own 8 to 19 in that little bottom area there i was talking about the majority oh, okay. of the airspace up there yep. okay i was just a bit confused with that. yep that's your airspace as well um we own that shelf and i'll talk more about interesting why that shelf became to be the way it is. I'm sure you guys sort of remember, maybe not, airspace changed recently, like a year or two ago of of that airspace changing around. Uh, so who are we missing? Sound off. Uh, I think Carter left. Carter left. He fell asleep. Thanks. Uh, For who else? I 
Anthony's there. Anthony on? I think one, two, three, four. I think that's all. Anthony's there. Thanks, Anthony. Never up, so that would be oh, okay. Gotcha. Probably if you time. ping, if you ping Max, he'll come. I'm pretty sure. Are you primed up now, uh, Brown? You should unprime. Trevor said to unprime. Will do. All right. So in this configuration again, we're one six. Or who else? Who wants to run first? I'll provide the briefing. I guess I'll go. Okay. Thanks for being brave. Alright, well, I guess you can reprime. <laughs> okay, so map management. Uh, Trevor brings up a good point. Some of us here. I mean, it's, it's personal preference, honestly, but then I want to make it a note where have as minimal of a map as you can, right? This is the whole point of why we're studying in the first place, where those maps should be up there as a reference, not to be used for, um, how do you say it? To be depended on as if like, oh, shoot, I, I, I don't know that, right? Don't get me wrong. I bring up uh, maps of stars all the time. because like, what, what's that altitude that guy should be at, right? And I don't want to bring up the chart or whatever it may be. But then the whole basic maps here you should be having is right now, again, we're 1 6. That means we should be having map number one up, right? And then your MVAs, if you don't have that um, kind of sort of memorized, have that up. It's it's a map, it's laid out as a map B. So you can adjust the brightness on that down without affecting map A, which is the rest of them. And uh, that should be it, right? If And then the ones that you kind of want to remember for area E is, let's see, we got area E, so airspace we should have down by now, um, right? We, we should not be thinking like, oh, oh crap, I, I don't know what my airspace is. Pretty simple, right? It's kind of like a box. Um, so you have, should have map number one, three if you want, uh, your... Uh, the area E SIDS, number 36, if you want, to reference of that. Area E STARS, number 46 for that. How do you pull up maps that are in the top? Control F, uh, F2. Yeah. Control F2 and then the map number. And then we have newer maps, which are the, uh, the RNAV courses. Thank goodness for those, right? Remember when we're taught about vectoring the final perch courses and we were generally wondering if aircraft were were uh, on the approach in the first place, right? We have the area E RNAV course, which is map number 70, right? See how cool that, that is? I mean, it's all put together. It's not um, divided individually by approaches. Um, and yeah, that, that should be it. Everything else is like an airspace map, so we don't have to worry about uh, there's T routes, there's uh, airways that you can bring up ever so often if someone flies and you got to venture someone on the route. There's uh, tower maps, tower airspace maps in there. Uh, I believe it's number seven, nope, 16. Right? 16 tower glider airspace. You should see the towers airspace in there if you don't memorize the class Charlie altitudes, so on and so forth, class Delta. I have them as map 14. I don't know if I'm using the old one or something. Yeah, probably, yeah. You're that or I edited it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Any questions with the? Good. Good. All right. So that was uh, Rowan that was stepping up. Yeah. Right? Or was that Sky? Okay, Rowan. I'm trying to remember people by voice here. Okay. So official briefing. We are runway one six. Weather's uh, VFR. Beautiful outside. Winds are coming out from the south. Um, traffic. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Who's uh, who's going first? Uh, uh, that should be. Three. Thank you. Do you want me to hand them to you yeah. first? Oh, and oh, then brief. So Alaska six seventy six is uh, coming from the center. No one's on your frequency at the moment. Uh, High tech thirty five forty six is on your frequency. 
uh, should be descending down. Southwest 319 on your frequency should be descending via. Yeah, 20 zero five is flashing to you and on your frequency just yet. 7 Juliet Alpha is coming in from Travis's airspace from the west there, uh, not on your frequency. You are talking to Southwest 1667, the Exojet 767, and the Southwest 761. Should be talking all of them. Notice they're kind of high. And yeah. uh, we're going to fix that. And then from the south, uh, nobody just yet. Questions? Um, no questions. My controller, why? Okay. Who's on this frequency? Uh, Southwest 319 from the east, high tech up north. Wait for the shut channel. I'm sorry, I don't mean you. I mean. Are you going to do pilot and I'm going to run them, or do you want me? Uh, you can pilot. I'm just going to watch my threats. Done. So all of these all these guys that are coming on the arrivals, they already have their altitudes and everything, just giving them the runway to expect. And the, Correct. Okay. And they us, perhaps. Yeah. Here we go. Have you ready? Play when ready. Thank yeah, you. It's going. Okay, Skywest 1667 NorCal approach. Uh, expect runway 16 right, or expect ILS runway 16 right. Uh, capital altimeter 3005. Who's that for? Uh, Skywest 6, or excuse me, Southwest 1667. Southwest 1667. Okay, we'll expect the visual 16 right. Uh, Southwest 319, NorCal approach. Expect uh, ILS from a 16 right approach. Uh, Sacramento, uh, Nor capital altimeter 3005. 16 right, Southwest 319. And keep in mind as well, planes that are transitioning from one sector to another, I want you to simulate as if there was somebody else on, even though you're working both. That means you should be descending them to the initial altitude as the exit and not freely vectoring. That demonstrates to me that you are knowing how to apply the exit routing. Okay, say that again. Say that one more time. So pause it for one second. So for example, the high tech, right? Coming from yeah. the north, he's going to land Mather. That's going to traverse Elkhorn and uh, Expo, right? I want you to treat it as if Expo's on, even though you're working it. That means you're going to put him on the correct uh, exit routing and altitudes. Does that make any sense? Uh, it makes sense, but I don't think we really went over that. Like... I know, I just, that's what I'm going over now. Okay. Unless it's a, it's a problem, then let me... Yeah, because I, I, I personally wouldn't know how to do that, like, so... Well, okay, so what if I were to come... With none of these have I gone into... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It. Sorry. We're, we're, it's going to be new, new to everybody here, new to myself even. And that makes sense, right? Let's say I'm coming up, hey, I want to take Expo from you. Are you going to panic now? What are you going to do, right? So you, yeah. you got to know your exiting, your airspace, and how to, to manage that. If you can do it between areas from E to C, E to uh, Travis, E to the center, why not E to yourself, right? This is this is event application. Think of it as an event, and it's splitting off, right? We're, yeah. We've seen too many situations of people not knowing their airspace, right? And this is a good application. Cool. Okay. So what is the exit routing? Where do we find that? Yes, Correct. All right, let's play. Hang on, they're not descending via. Alaska 676, NorCal approach, uh, cross tutor at or above 2000, or cross tutor at 2000. Um, expect ILS runway 16 right approach. Uh, capital altimeter 3005. Alaska 676, cross tutor at, uh, you said at 2000? Yeah, at 2000. 
last 676 Roger uh, we'll uh, we'll hurry down to 2000 it Height 3546 to center maintain. Let's see. Center maintain uh, 10, 000. Actually, one's center maintain a uh, 7000. 7000 high tech 3546. There we go. November 347 Juliet Alpha. Proceed direct. Uh, actually. Stand by. What would it be? Uh, NorCal approach. Uh, twin Cessna 347 Julie Alpha 3500. November 347 Juliet Alpha. Contact uh, Sacramento. Or cap to contact Capital Tower on uh, 125.7. One, one, all right, 257-347, Juliet Alpha. We're landing Auburn. Uh, November 347, Juliet Alpha. Would you like to uh, remain clear of the the, sacri or the capital uh, or class, Charlie? Uh, no, we're uh, talking to you. We're just going direct uh, Auburn at this time. Uh, 7, Juliet. Uh, 7, Juliet Alpha, Roger. I'll be fine. He can do his thing. Uh, Uh, Hawaiian 20, heavy with me. What do they descend down from there, Dom? I don't have oh, it up. Uh, dump them down to the south. If I don't check in, check in for me so I know that they're there. Approach line 20 heavy, 16 descending 7. We have the uh, ADA set. Uh, sir. Hawaiian uh, 20 heavy. Expect, uh, expect visual runway uh, 16 right. Visual 16 right. right. I got it. Well, just check yeah. in so I know who I'm missing. Number number one one four kilo number cross tutor right above t cross tutor at two thousand expect ILS runway one six right approach capital timber three zero zero five. Narcal approach, Pack Valley seventy six fifties uh, seven thousand with the weather at uh, oh. Sacramento. Pack Valley 7650, expect uh, ILS runway 16 right approach. Uh, capital altimeter 3005. Okay. Oh All right, uh, did you say the ILS or the visual to 16 right? Pack Valley 7650. Expect the visual. Visual Pack Valley 7650. Skywest uh, 5096 to send and maintain. Send and maintain 4000. 4000. Uh, and actually, uh, NorCal Sky was 5096 is uh, 1 1000 with uh, information. Sky was 5096, NorCal approach, expect ILS runway 16 right, uh, capital altimeter 3005. ILS 16 right, Sky was 5096. All right, uh, just because you have a data block doesn't mean he's on your frequency. Okay. Every time I hand you a data block, that means he's coming to your frequency at some point in the near future. Can't just start calling people out if you don't have them on your frequency. Gotcha. So you'll hear the little beep, and then you go. F you, you accept the handoff. Like, if you can't handle an aircraft, you're you're literally sitting there watching your borders, uh, and taking the handoff. The like within about a half a second of me sending it. You don't have to accept the handoff. Okay. If you don't accept a handoff, that airplane's not coming into your airspace. And if it is, it's an airspace violation on the other controller. Okay. And on that as well, how do you move the flight plan list because it's in the way? F seven T S. Or sorry, F seven uh, T, and then or F seven T, and then turn off. I only have the sign on list and the uh, SSA. I am so oh, cool. fucked. Sweet, okay. right, let's keep this going, please.
NorCal Southwest 1061s, 13-3, descending via the uh, Sutter 2 with Julie. Southwest uh, 1061, uh, expect uh, visual runway 16 right, uh, capital altimeter 3005. Visual 16 right, Southwest 1061. Trevor, spin all of the guys on the slammer around out to the east and then bring them back Okay. when you're able. Uh, Southwest 319, uh, cross Tenco at or above 4,500, cleared ILS runway 16 right approach. Tenco out above 3500 cleared ILS 16 right southwest 39. Spin the southwest 725 if he's not on the frequency yet. Up uh, on Twitter. He's a 737, 737, go to 260. And the 4Q in November as well, north. Alaska 676 reduced speed to uh, 240 or two, yeah, 240 knots or less. Uh, 240, and who is that for? Alaska 676. Alaska 676, slowing to 240. Where the heck is he? He's on the tutor over there. Southwest of Beale. Alaska. Rowan, when you get the chance, flash all those. Uh, the United 2005, the horizon behind him, the 4 kilo November in United, or Southwest 725 up north back to the. Okay, back to. Let it fly. Okay. What center? Where do you want? Either. To their respective. Hear that or give it back to Trevor. And Hawaiian 20 for a base turn. Hawaiian 20, uh, turn right heading 1, or turn right heading 070. Heading 070, Hawaiian 20. Okay. Alaska 676. Ooh, it's not going to look good for them. Okay. Southwest. What am I gonna do here? I reduce this. And let's pause. Yeah. Cool. All right. Next person is gonna be up. Who wants to run next? Oh, you got a mess. We're gonna debrief in between. But uh, is it who wants? Like it new, or is it gonna be the same situation? Just... It's gonna be the same situation. Or it's gonna be right now, as. It... Right. Yeah. I hate your scope. Anthony, Anthony, you're up next. Okay. Um, <laughs> debrief. So. This is going to happen, right? This is as realistic as is can be. And it's to show you how a situation can start out, you know, just five to 10 minutes before all, all dandy and stuff. Everyone's separated and you're right. Everyone's 10 miles in trail and then it can turn very ugly real fast. Right. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here. I'm not here to, to turn you down and be like, no, you suck. You shouldn't be doing that. This is a learning environment for everybody. Right. I can be learning this as well. Right. So the situation turns bad because number one preparation right preparation yeah. is key and planning is key who's coming in my airspace what kind of route are they on all that has to be processed prior to the aircraft even even checking on right yeah. that's how your mental your your brain should be working although that's what I'm prepping you for. That's why we're on Sweatbox and this is not the live network, right? You're supposed to know all that information coming into you, what type of exit rating is coming out of, how is he, how is he going to terminate, and what's the end goal for him, correct? Yeah. So starting from – so we had a little you know, rough start with the whole descending via process, and that will happen. You'll find uh, planes violating it. Not everybody's going to be on the perfect – altitudes you'll find on Vatsim either because they descended late, they were uh, watching Netflix and they decided, oh shit, I hit the top of descent too late. Happens all the time, right? Yeah. And it's, it's all can be via coordinated and you just have to work with it. And then likewise, Antony steps up to the plate and he's taken over for you. Vatsim traffic is not going to reset for you and look all pretty for you to work, right? It's going to be looking shitty based on whoever you just took the position from. So teamwork and the whole debriefing process and cleaning it up for the next person 
is what we can learn from this as well. All right, coming down to the aircraft, um, before you brief Anthony of what the heck is going on, uh, Hawaiian 20, late check on happens, right? They can get the frequency wrong. What are they supposed to be doing by letter of agreement? Oh, they're supposed to be making that uh, 340 heading on that down on that downwind. Um, oh, really? What what were what are they doing? They were going, gosh, 300 or something like that. Okay, yeah. but but then why why 340? Is that your expectation, or is that what they're supposed to be doing? Uh, that's what they're supposed to be doing. Right from from what from how? Uh, read read me the, his route. So bring up his his route, and you can do F7D, and then click on him, or F6, open his. F7D for everybody brings you a small digest in your readout area of his very basic information, his aircraft type, call sign, parts of his reading. So he's, he, he's coming uh, from point raise direct. Direct, right? So where yeah. is that in the 340? Who's given the 340? Uh, I'm supposed to give the 340. Did you give the 340? No. Right. So just because he turned does not... you got to be confident. This is where... There's a line between a leniency between air, uh, what the aircraft is doing versus you being there or what they're requesting versus you as the air traffic controller assigning it to them. And this is a, it's a human factors type of thing where you're expecting it to happen versus what he's actually doing. And it causes the end state is can be terrifying or you caught it just in time and, and you fix it. Right. So in this case, it's a pilot deviation, obviously. Right. He started the left turn for for no odd reason. And you'll see that all the time. Pilots like, oh, I thought I was supposed to be turning uh, to the initial approach fix. I was supposed to set, my up, uh, set myself up for the downwind. Happens all the time, right? So it's your job to catch that and fix that. Okay. So he's point raised direct, descending to seven. You're supposed to either vector him out somewhere, wherever you want, but he didn't do that. So that's yeah. on him. And that could have been traffic with the pack valley, as you can see up there. Um, Alaska 676 to the north now. We're going clockwise. Yeah. So... What was your instruction to him as he was ascending? I gave him cross tutor at or above 2,000, or at 2,000. At 2,000, right? Yeah. So anybody here that's not Rowan or Trevor or Doug, thoughts, opinion? Um, maybe he was in an MV. I mean, it looks kind of good. I tried that. I expedited him down. Too high? Uh, probably... Alex, you think it's too high? Anthony, what do you think? Uh, the awesome. 676. I give up on this shit. Did you even get, Planes did are you even, Did you even get the data track? It looks like there's a B on it. Why is there a B on it? That's my bad. Okay. Uh, Anthony, what do you think? Oh, it's too high. It's too high. Yeah. He's yeah. now, that's the end result, yes, but then that instruction that, that was given initially, what do you think of it? Oh, at or above. Okay, fair enough. Uh, no, I, I, well, yeah, well, if you say, I don't know what he actually said. Um, he said cross tutor at 2000. Okay. Okay. Max, what do you think? Is Max even here? No, I don't think he is. Sky, what do you think? Oh, uh, I um, honestly, Alaska six seventy six. I have no clue. Probably what do you mean? No, no clue. So the instruction was he's at the high twenties. He's coming from the north, and he's told to cross Tudor at. What do you think of that? Uh, unrealistic for what he. Okay, basically. Sky. What do you think? I agree. I think it's unrealistic for what he was at to get down there. Yeah. Okay. So what we learned from that is he's in the high twenties, right? He's supposed to be sending down a. Scenario happens, right? The yeah. Late descent. If he was at 12 by the border, that can probably happen. Can maybe happen, right? Because yeah. we're what are we judging this and we're using what we know. The tutor arrival, if you bring it up, there's an expected altitude of bulls at around 12, and that's where bulls is around there, right? Um, then if you descend down to 2000, that would work out on the glide path, or excuse me, glide path perfectly, right? Without any hesitation, he should be able to make it. Um, and if you factor in, this is a center uh, technique. Obviously, we don't have minutes in terms of uh, to see aircraft's time relation 
with the fix he's going to make in one. So we're thinking between 2,000 to 3,000 feet per minute descent, right? And it takes him approximately, oh, I don't know, he's doing 290, 300 divided by 60, right? Because we're converting back to minutes. This is a technique where we use minutes and and deriving how long or getting an estimate basically of what he can be be doing so 300 goes into 60 how many times 310 can't 320 can't 340 so we go back down to 80 to now about 50 right so five so he's doing five miles a minute. Everyone agree? Can everyone see how I, I got that number? Yeah. Five miles a minute. So he's from the border to where Tudor was. That's about 20 miles. 20 miles. And he's doing five miles a minute. How many minutes, if it goes in perfectly, how many minutes approximately does it take from him from the border to Tudor? Four, right? 20 goes into five, four times. I suck at math too, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> four times, right? So what does that mean? 20 miles and he's going five miles a minute. Four minutes to get there. And he's descending at a rate of, let's say, 2,000 feet a minute yeah. or even 3,000 feet a minute even, right? So that means he would be losing three times four now, right? We're using the max numbers yeah. here. Three times four, 12. Everybody said where I got that number from? He'd be losing 12,000 feet, right? So he was at 20,000 feet by the border. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to what we got. This is what we derived. 20,000 there. To lose 12,000 feet, that's eight. So by Tudor, if he was ascending at a rate of 3,000 feet a minute. 6,000 feet too high. Correct. And this is 30 miles. I was wrong even. It's not even 20 miles, but I used an easy number for you guys to understand, right? So he'd be around eight to 4,000 feet around there. And was he? Yeah. All right. So that's why that doesn't work. Unless you're asking him to nose over. And, you've, and we've all flown on the network. This is why it's easy for us to understand when I, when I reference, oh, can a 737 do that? You guys should know what the heck I'm talking about, right? So that was unrealistic. How should we have done that? Uh, one, at or above. Right, I'm giving you all the options here. I, I'm not just I'm not just narrowing down what you have to be doing. This is a technique thing, right? You could be either given cross tutor at, at or above two thousand. And the first thing you should, when you receive him, that's what you should be doing. So he can be okay. expecting that. Pretend you're the pilot. Controller just talks to you and gives you that instruction. You'd be programming that thing in. The plane's going to be ahead of you're going to be ahead of the aircraft, and the planes might be able to to make it. But then if you received him late or you give the instruction late, there's no way the plane's going to make it. Yeah. So you either have to vector them out, right? Um, so that's for that guy. Everybody else, thankfully, they turned away because they're too high and be way too unrealistic to, to be doing that. Um, so the high tech that came down, I didn't think I heard height in that one, high tech coming down. You gave an immediate decent down a seven. So the whole thing, when it comes down to radar, that's, that's similar that I can compare to for tower, air, uh, to tower control is protection yeah. the word protection right we, we understand the concept of protection it means we give an instruction that is a positive control instruction that would not ever result you in getting yourself into a deal right whether it be a terrain deal or an aircraft aircraft deal this would be an aircraft aircraft deal and you can see why yeah because that you know of this flow. This is this is nothing complex, right? Anybody on the slammer arrival, if you guys want to bring up that map number forty six, right? That slammer arrival from slammers from thirteen to seventeen, posers around eight. So then you can imagine between thirteen and eight thousand is where those aircraft will be, yeah. and just very fast, right? You give a a, a slap decent of seven thousand to this high tech. What do you think is going to happen? It fly right into the other guy. Exactly, right. So then a positive control, and the only thing that would ever make sense in, in this case would be, uh, th this, is, this would be kind of a, a non-radar aspect of it, is, is paper stopping the guy, is to maintain 
uh, fell over 180, which is out of the question, right? How would you get this guy? How would you duck this guy down to the point where uh, you can hand off to Expo or get him down to Mather, right? So that's out of the question. You can't be maintaining 18 to protect that. Yeah. To get him down, you have to take into, I'm not saying you didn't consider it, but then I'm sure most of us being new here has not seen that, right? You did not think, oh, this is just a thing in a seven. You did not think the consequences of this guy descending down to 7,000 at around 2,000 feet a minute or even 1,000 feet a minute would be possible conflict with these guys descending, with this, especially a stream, right? And it's your responsibility. This is in your sector. This is not anybody else's sector, right? You're not protecting departures or anything. You're just protecting your own stream of traffic, yeah. right? And you just cause yourself more of a workload. So a technique you could do with this is you vector them somewhere out along uh, closer to, to Beal, let's say, more past Poser, okay. right? So then as they're descending, they won't meet with the other guy. Or vice versa, you think you descend them early now, you turn them out towards a mountain, this area down there, that means they're, the aircraft are high as they're descending, okay. right? Or you work... Or you make it positive is what I'm trying to say. Cause you descend down to seven. Oh, I forget about them. It's possible traffic with everybody else. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's for that. Those guys. Uh, the other thing, these, the two streams, the two conflicting streams that would merge, obviously everything merges here is you have the slammer stream and the tutor stream. That's going to, yeah. right. So you got to, and the tool that I would be using, cause then I know you guys are asking right away. is like, wait, how do I know how, how to separate that? Right. Do I, do I just put, bats on them to, to see how far they go out no what we have is the end tool right you either were taught this or you weren't taught this uh the end tool you hit the end button and you slew the two aircraft you will see where they will meet for example alaska 676 and southwest three stars will be taking the aircraft's current ground speed and its current tra uh, trajectory and be projecting that out. And that's how planes merge. And that's how we sequence stuff usually in area B for San Francisco and the diamond and the surfer arrivals, right? This is how we put planes together. We use that base number. So Southwest 319 and Alaska 676. Alaska 676 looks like he has about a one in and one fifteenth of a mile of a lead with Southwest 319. Makes sense, right? Because he's doing yeah. 290 over the ground and then stuff. Obviously not a precise number because that can change. It's constantly changing. And it will change because you slap speeds on people or if they are not, they're going to start turning on, on the final approach course, for example. That's going to change, right? Yeah. So that's what the end tool is for, is for you to guesstimate, but then you still got to use your brain is, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, speaking of, Alaska 676. He's already descending. He's going already fast. And then you slap another speed. Maintain 240 knots or less. Mm. Maybe, yeah, because he's supposed to, right? Quote, unquote, supposed yeah. to be doing 250 is what he's supposed to be doing. So 240 or less is, sure. Um, we'll leave it at that. Down here on the uh, Sutter and the Concord arrival, that's a merging right yeah. there. Then you would use an end tool on that too, or you just eyeball it, right? Where's the next path? Or excuse me, where's the next, uh, where's the next hole that I need to be creating in order for for exit jet to right that's that's your mindset that you should be having if you have a stream of guys coming in like this you have you have a house record coming in, you got to create room right because there's no you can't be like oh i'll just let it i'll deal with it later and then they'll merge is what's going to happen either that or you have to use out positive altitude separation because the servers are or sorry the sutters are uh, freely descending to what rowan uh, they're down to four thousand Correct, four thousand, right? And this exit jet is unfortunately coming to you at eleven thousand. Yeah. Correct, right? These um, these guys in the Sutters, obviously, they're supposed to be around the seven thousand, five thousand, right? Yeah, not twelve, but you get what I mean. That's that's even worse, right? Because now you have some guy up high that you're trying to get down low, right? Mm -hmm. So that means they're going to be off in a vector, and you can turn them in after, but you got be creating some type of altitude separation yeah, or vector, right? You can vector the Southwest out, create a hole, put the exit jet in. Yeah. Um, that VFR. So I think you were overdoing 
that VFR transition in the first place? Did you did you know he's going to Auburn in the first place, or did you? I think knew he was going to Auburn. Right. I think he got confused on the difference between the surface area of the Charlie going and up to the 41. Tower's airspace. Yeah, the tower's airspace is only up to 25. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So just because the class Charlie says service to 41 does not necessarily mean the tower owns up to 41. What are the communication requirements for an aircraft in class Charlie airspace? It's, uh, it's, a squ it's a squawk and uh, communication. Who so, does communication so, need to be with? Uh, it's a trick question. It needs two-way radio communication. Does he have two-way radio, radio communication? He does. Does he have a squawk? Yes. Obviously, because he came to you from Travis Broach on a handoff. Yeah. Problem solved. He's okay. done. All you need to do is provide your VFR flight following services. Gotcha. Now, the next question is, I heard you said procedure. Uh, so the word proceed direct is the VFR equivalent or is, is an IFR um, phraseology, right? Proceed direct this, direct this, yeah. clear direct this, right? The VFR phraseology you're looking for is proceed to, okay. right? Or remain south, use easy to understand terms, but the, the actual phraseology is proceed to, right? And this is where knowing your, your airspace uh, and geography is important, right? Um, because now you got to be like, oh shoot, I know, I know right away what I can use. Uh, proceed to McClellan, for example, right? Remain gotcha. south of McClellan, things like that. Because this guy's also a home wrecker. He's going through uh, your final approach course at 4,500, yeah. And you need to protect the final approach course, obviously, because you can imagine what he could be doing. He's going to Auburn. It's pretty close. He could start descending whatever he wants, basically. Yeah. So positive control. Vector and but don't over control is what I'm trying to get at. Gotcha. Now, do you think the tower owns service of 41? You hand off to to him. Uh, but how long is it only gonna be for probably if he's going what 160 ish? He's gonna be like not with them very long, correct. He's going to trek over five miles, even less than that, yeah. doing less than that, right? It's going to be probably a minute. Or... So, I mean, and he's going to cut across like that. He's not going to use the whole airspace. So what should you, instead of a handoff, affect a point out? Yes. Right. Point out or get him out of that airspace to start with. Okay. Right. Get him out of the final. He's VFR. He doesn't have a uh, priority over I for arrivals. Get him out of that area, right? Make him cross over the airport. That's usually a, a good technique is get him across the airport, hand him off the tower if you have to. Okay. And he comes out the other side. Does that make any sense? So that he doesn't yeah. hit your departures. He's not in a departure corridor. He's not in the arrival corridor. He's over the airport, right? At whatever altitude is whatever altitude. Right. But obviously, the safest place for him is directly over the, head, the top of the airport because a go-around is not going to hit him because a go-around is going to be low. And the tower or you can positively separate it. If you, you say cross midfield uh, at the uh, cross midfield at or above 3,500, all your go arounds, you know, go around fly runway heading, maintain 3,000. Yeah. And if you keep them at, you can keep them, say, hey, tower, you got 347 Julie Alpha on a point out. He's uh, going to be at 3,500. And the tower goes, okay, cool, thanks. And then whenever he calls a go around or gives a departure, if he needs to, he restricts it below, restricts it below that traffic. And then you never have a problem. The okay. safest place for VFRs is right over the top of the airport because you know exactly what they're going to be doing. And now you've, since you've done the point out, tower is technically supposed to be protecting for that now, right? Because when they say the, once the term point out or proved, right? We, we learn, we know what that means, right? They are automatically responsible. Well, I'm not sure even S2 students even know what a point out is, but then they should be responsible for any aircraft in their airspace that will affect that traffic does that make any sense yeah. once you've done that they say radar contact or they say point out approve that automatically means they're responsible for that point out in their airspace and they need to let you know of any restrictions if need be like unable or you know uh some julia alpha maintain vfr at about 3500 for a go around reference okay. this traffic for example right but best again now that you know surface is 25 belongs to the tower 3500 is still yours and yeah right and what's the VFR phraseology for this guy so that you to uh, maintain a certain altitude or do what you want? Maintain VFR at 
3,500, that sort of thing. Yeah. Good. Not that sort of thing, right? But it's either positive on that or or you're not, right? So seven Julian, uh, number 7 Julian Alpha, maintain VFR at 3,500. Right? Yeah. That's good, and right? Then... You don't want to do at or above. You don't want to do at or below. Okay. At or above, sure, if you feel comfortable, but then with this amount of traffic, just maintain VFR at 3,500. Gotcha. And then what what if, uh, what about when you want to cancel it? What do you do? Uh, proceed on course. Or... Well, proceed on course. So... Well, that would be his... Uh, his... Uh, we just say maintain VFR. He is doing that. Yeah. He should be by by code of fig relations. I believe he should be maintaining VFR. But well, let's say altitudes. You want to get rid of his altitudes. What's the phraseology for that? Anybody here know? Maintain appropriate VFR altitudes, right? Maintain appropriate VFR altitudes. We should sort of know that from San Francisco, right? Or other airspaces when you clear them to the Bravo, maintain VFR below 2000, right? While in the Bravo airspace, then now you don't need them anymore. Maintain appropriate VFR. That right? is the proper phraseology for that. Or VFR altitude, your discretion. Yeah, if you want to. Okay. That's the, that's the more popular one I hear real world all the time. Yep. Popular, but... Not necessarily not correct, necessarily. but... Yeah. All right. Or I've I, heard the the classic maintain VFR altitudes your discretion. <laughs> yeah. Combine the two. Something like that. And then yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, I didn't want to delve too much into that, but all right. Scanning um, from the inside out. Yeah, that's I have a question. Yeah, so So on the um SOP. It says for Alcorn um, South procedures, the Alcorn exit routes uh, to go to Mather is 5,000, and then radar vectors Oscar is 61. Um, but he's right now on a course to camera, which joins the IOS. So what should that procedure be? How do you mean? Like, should, should he be on a radar vector to Oscar 71, even though he's going to Mather, or should he just cruise? beyond direct so do you know where uh, where cameron park Cam camera is uh on the ls or cameron park. park so that does that answer your question uh sure yeah no does it though you cameron park is right there on, along the final perch course almost of mather so the sop exit route is to maintain five and vec radar vectors to that Point. So that sets them up on a base for Expo. Okay. Right. And if you're going to deviate from that, then you should let the next controller know. Good. Coordinate, right? And don't steer away from coordinating just because you're you're afraid, right? Or I understand if you're too busy, but then you got to coordinate. You know, Apric, this guy at seventh, for example, or doing something else other than. What he's supposed to be doing. Okay. okay. Anthony, up to the plate. Let oh, me know when you're ready. Yeah. What yeah. is Oscar 61? It's an airport. Uh, do you do <laughs> dot find KO61? You just see a green, uh, small screen, green dot. Oh, or, you can't uh, put the K in there. No, it has to be a K because yeah. stupid airport. Just type, I know. Oscar sixty one does not. I just did it. Doesn't. No, K Oscar sixty. Kilo Oscar doesn't, sixty one. Nope, doesn't work. Just dot find o six one. K o six one worked for. No, me. if I got dot find o six one doesn't, doesn't work. Why, doesn't work for me for some reason. Interesting. We got a bazillion different ways. But to oh no, K set up. I'm afraid. K o six one works. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be K o six one because it's. Deriving from your airport XML, which is everything starts at, even though stars real world when it's adapted, it's just a three. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't have that uh, most recent uh, update. scanning. Right. Anthony, up. This um, it's just that stressful. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, Rowan. so if it's going to be that stressful for you, if you're that worried about it, I'm going to leave it paused for the next five minutes and you're going to go and start from the inside out 
So the closest guy to the airport and work through with Dom what you're going to do for the next five minutes. That's the plan. Yep. So I'm not going to touch it. Just do it. Do it now while they're paused and work your way, like work your way from the closest aircraft to the airport out. Run debrief this gentleman, please. And we'll... uh, okay. So, uh, uh, November three four seven Juliet Alpha is at three thousand five hundred GFR to Auburn. Uh, so, or Southwest three nineteen has been cleared for the ILS uh, at uh, Tenko. He's at uh, four thousand six hundred four thousand five hundred. Looks about right. Uh, Alaska six seventy six on the ILS. They are going to converge one mile out uh, from each other. Alaska will be in front. Skywest uh, 5096 is uh, at a heading of 2 Niners zone needs to be turned northbound. Uh, Hawaiian 20 is going to be uh, turning base uh, for three or for one six right. Uh, November 141 or 114 kilo November is most likely going to be with center. He's turning around the other way. Okay. Um, and uh, your uh, your slammer. Uh, your, excuse me, your Sutter flow is going to be uh, Southwest 1667 in front, Dexa Jet, they're all going to be descending via, and then Exec Jet uh, will uh, be in between the, the Southwest and the Exa Jet. Uh, they'll, uh, Exa Jet, uh, Exec Jet 871 and Southwest 1061 will uh, intercept. Uh, Exec Jet will be in front. Uh, Southwest will be, at th- will be at three miles in change. Um, believe that's it. Any questions? Exojet? So say it with me. Exo? Exo. X-O. I, I suffer from this too, so don't worry. Exojet? Yeah. Execjet. 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 Uh, yep. Execjet 841. Executive X-O-Jet. jet. Yeah. Basically. Just think executive and take off the it. Gotcha. Um, so, like, I'm prime now. How do I take... Because I'm, I'm start flash. I have to quick look all the time. I'm quick. No, all he's, the gonna, time. he's gonna flash. In the brief, can you just flash him and then yes. every time you flash as you talk? Target? Flash as you talk and then well, no, have like, a. Instead of saying the call sign, just flash him and say this person as you flash him, or do you have? To uh, I mean, depends on who's taking over for you and if they're ready, and they're constantly sitting there and taking over. Right? You're not sitting with them, so it's hard to, to do. So, right. and you're busy too. Right, it's, it's not just one or two aircraft. It all depends. I would do that when there's only one or two guys. I'm just like, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that when I'm lazy. Or otherwise, I want to be specific. Because then you flash like five at a time, and then you're saying this guy's going to go in front. It's like, wait, 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 wait who? Right? That means you're just wasting dead air time. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, these planes are paused too, so. Can you give instructions in between briefing? Uh yeah, and when they're moving, that's what you should be doing, right? And that's and resolving this. There should be even realistically, you're not even supposed to be briefing when this is happening right now. You should be solving the deal that you're about to have in 30 seconds here. This is what you should be doing, right? And I know Doug probably taught you debriefs, right? Debriefs. I like to follow uh this acronym SUT S E W T, right? Situation or S is for S I A. Like when I started, it was. Uh, we are one six. May there's two two. Sacramento's two zero, right? Or one sixes to start out with. Um, equipment's good. Nothing breaking or anything like that. Weather, VFR clearing a million. No ride complaint. Traffic. Start with the so whatever your flow is, right? You can do clockwise. You can do whatever is the most important that needs to be looked at right now. Uh, and then work your way out. You can do that. Okay. Right, but then generally follow that because treat it as if this person just came in and they're going to take over. They haven't done their weather briefing. They haven't done any of their status stuff. So it's your responsibility to give them the best picture, and that's the best way you can do it in the shortest amount of time. Is suit S E W T right? Okay. Status information area equipment weather traffic. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, so okay. just quickly, so you clear the southwest for the ILS, but what what did Alaska do again? I've forgotten. Alaska, yeah, six seventy six. He should be on the ILS as well. Nope, oh, he's not on the ILS. You, okay. you, you gave him cleared dr- across tutor at or above, or you said cl- across tutor above uh, two thousand, and that. Okay. So, so yeah, 
you didn't yeah you could have you could have technically you could have gone cross tutor above 2000 cleared ILS range 16 right and you'd bet you you, you could have just watched them and then it, it would have been done or what you should have done was what we talked about earlier you know to send them and then give them the option and then as he gets closer you see oh he's in conflict with southwest do i want alaska to go behind or do i want southwest to go in front you make you work out that problem and then cuz if you clear him for the approach he's expecting like cool i'm number 1 i'm just going to do whatever the hell i want gotcha exactly. Now all of a sudden you pull them off the approach and it's like holy shit like what the hell's going on I wasn't prepared for that. Okay. And this that's a good point. So so the clearance for this a lot the tutor ends at tutor, right? It doesn't yeah. go to my knowledge. It doesn't go anywhere else. So what is he technically doing right now now that you did not clear him for the approach? I didn't even notice that. He's just flying. Flying where? Uh, he's just flying direct the airport, right? If, yeah. if if you're lucky, right? Uh or even establish on the ILS if you're lucky. But you should not be doing that. Yeah. All right. You told him to expect the ILS, like what Trevor said. Give him cross tutor above this, clear this, or to prime him in at tutor intercept only one six right localizer. That gets him on uh, the the path to set him up right, and then you yeah. just have to clear him. I know you guys learn P tax and whatnot, but then this is another technique, right? There's just a billion types of techniques, uh, different types of way to skin a cat is what they call it, to approach the problem. You don't have to use P-TACs and everybody just because they're doing an instrument approach, right? You can do bits at a time. And you've heard that as a pilot and sometimes as a controller as well, right? You, you guys should know that by now where using things like at this, showing the only one six right localizer and then later on and clear them for the approach is perfectly legal and is a good technique, right? Yeah. Okay. So just to confirm on that, so Alaska 676, could you just go... Five miles from Fappen, uh, descend to maintain 1,800 until established, cleared RLS 16 right. Alaska 676, are you established on the look like? Yes, we are. Oh, okay. Alaska 676, cleared ILS, whatever, we're only 16 right. Oh, okay, okay. But then yours is correct as well. You got to, per the SOP and the point sixty five, you got to reference distance from a fit. Alaska 676, instead of playing a million questions with them, just clear them. Alaska 676, three miles from Fippen. Maintain 1,400 until established on the localizer. Clear dial 716 right approach. Done. Right? Done. Or Alaska 6, if you had them already established on the localizer before, Alaska 676, uh, cross FIPIN out above this, cleared ILS 716 right approach. Right? That works too, because he's established on the localizer. He should know where his DME and all that. Mm, okay. I'll give you a go now. All right, now between Anthony and I, talk me through. Give me, don't hyperventilate. Try your best with the uh, from left to right or clockwise in, in a manner that I can see what you're doing. Oh, well, I just want to get the data tags first. Or do I have to wait till it's under? Give him the data tags, please, Ron. We'll, we'll do. And then hand me the guys that are up high. Okay. Uh, hand them back to uh, either 2B or... Yeah, I just hand them to 2B. So I want Horizon, Kila November, and United 2005. And Southwest 820, 725. Okay. Basically all the guys that are in the 20s that I forgot about that didn't descend via like they, Elliot said they would. Uh, while I was doing that, I guess um, 7 Juliet Alpha, which he gave me now, um, kind of want to turn him right, sort of on a more sort of eastbound heading. Okay. But um, so as you were talking there about VFR altitude, I was going, I actually don't have, can you turn a VFR aircraft on a radar yes. vector? So everybody listen up. VFR aircraft can be vectored. Why? because they are operating in a class echo environment. Class echo airspace is a, someone fill that in please. What type of airspace is it? It is a controlled or non-controlled airspace. It can, it can be controlled. Can be controlled or controlled? I believe it is controlled. Controlled airspace, right? Class echo, everything besides yeah. golf is, yeah, is considered controlled. If it's controlled airspace, that means you can control an aircraft, right? 
And for the purposes of of uh, separating aircraft, that is part of your uh, operational priority and duty, right? Is to separate aircraft and provide safety alerts per the point sixty five. So yes, yeah, so you can vector VFR aircraft. It is their duty to maintain VFR. If they cannot, they they are supposed to tell you unable, uh, unable to maintain VFR. I got to do this for a cloud or whatever it is, right? Then you can accommodate to that. You can also vector them below the MVA for VFR aircraft because they are VFR. They're supposed to maintain their own train obstruction clearance as well. Everybody understand that? My suggestion, uh, Anthony. Oh, sorry. You weren't done. No, no, I'm done. All right. My suggestion with 47 Juliet Alpha, he's a VFR. Do you, are you required to provide him uh, VFR flight following service? Required, no. Terminate him. Get rid of him. Squawk VFR, freak exchange proof. See ya. Bye. Now yep. you cannot... Now the problem is he might make flip a Yui and go right back the way he came as long as he stays outside of the Charlie. Correct. But but he, now you no longer have to control him. Now it's just, okay, I need to not hit that airplane. Like if and you just don't... If you can't handle a VFR, don't accept a VFR. Remain outside the San Francisco Class Bravo. Remain outside the Class Charlie airspace. Maintain VFR and freak exchange proof. Okay. Get rid of them, and that's if and you then cannot when they pile handle space and piss you off. Dot wallop them. If you cannot handle volume, that's what you should do. If you know you cannot provide be a service to him, radar service terminated. Squawk VFR, freaking right. But otherwise, in certain situations where you know there's a flow, let's say a flow of slammers coming down, and he might traverse that area, I suggest you keep on to him if you can work him. Right, because you got to control him. That's or else, what if he climbs against your your slammers? That means you have to turn everybody on the slammer away from him to to maintain separation. You cannot. That's positive separation, right, guys? It's not. It's not. Oh, he's VFR. They're supposed to. He's supposed to maintain his distance away from other planes. Yes, technically they are, but then when they hit each other, whose fault is it now? Yours. Right, because you you still have to maintain that positive separation between aircraft, and I cannot stress that that uh, information in any other way in any other form okay uh so i get where you're going from so if i go say to seven juliet alpha turn right hand zero nine zero um do i have to give him a reason why i'm giving the vector like because uh, yes we haven't given him a vector before correct so number seven juliet alpha flying zero nine zero vector traffic done uh, cool. I, yeah. I know there's in the point sixty five, it says for the reason, and I've seen it in your guys' uh, training notes that Doug wrote up. Vector to the final approach course, vector spacing, right? Those are all valid and very good. Short to the, it's not a vector for uh, some jets coming down on the slammer. No, vector for traffic. When you're this busy, you don't want to be any more specific than that and provide questions for this guy, right? Vector for traffic, vector for spacing, uh, vector to the final approach course. That's usually three or four reasons that you should narrow down to okay so yeah so I'll, if i you know keep going so well seven jetty out alpha turn right in zero no zero for traffic and then if we move to the left of the southwest 319 because i'll just do what you asked me to do before for the chikra uh he's on the ils well he's been pointed towards it um by Rowan, so i don't think i have to do anything for him Oh well, you know? first of all, let's look. Let's look at this. Is R three four seven Juliet Alpha and Southwest three nineteen a conflict? Yes or no? Uh, they look pretty fucking close. Are, that's but, not a good answer. That's no. bad, wrong answer. Look right, at look at their data blocks and interpret the information they're giving you. Uh, remember which direction either of them are going. Are they a conflict? Ye they will. Yes, they are. Yep. Why? Well, he's at 35, but Southwest is descending, so they'll lose. Yeah, but which direction is Southwest going? Uh, well, on my screen, he's going on a sort of 250-ish heading. Are you using a, are you using a multi so that you have the solid blue blocks? Or are you using the Sacramento Forget site? that. Forget that. D Use which, what yeah. you know. Use what you know. Southwest 319 is on the, what, slammer. Which yeah. way is the slammer going? 250. Right? That's all That's all you need to know. 
Seven Julie Alpha, where's he going? Auburn. You know where Auburn is? You should. Northeast bound. Yeah. That means they are diverging, right? So your answer is your quick answer is they are not going to be in conflict. Your separation services uh, wise, they're both going to be in the Charlie, right? So then you got to think about uh, your Charlie VFR to IFR separation. Is there any VFR to IFR separation in a Charlie environment? No, it's just advisories, right? VFR to VFR and VFR to IFR is traffic advice. Okay. Right? So um, my point is, my point is, Anthony, sorry if I made that confusing, is they're passing a beam each other. They didn't hit and they're going opposite directions. They are not in conflict with one another. Uh, so don't worry about 7 Juliet Alpha. He's no longer a problem. Right. But a, does that a mean traffic point out five minutes ago would have been nice, but right. we don't need to worry about that at this point. And honestly, that happens real world all the time. I go past airplane five airplanes 500 feet below in the jet, and I go, oh, hey, there's a VFR down there. Cool. I didn't hit him. And I never heard anything out of NorCal or the approach controller or the center. Should that have happened? No. Right, the good controller would be given traffic advisories miles before that, or vectoring them out prior so that they wouldn't be heading in the first place. And what else would you need from them, given the altitude difference and where their relative positions are? What do you need to give to some Juliet Alpha traffic advisory? And uh, call me. Yes, caution with turbulence. Right, Southwest is dirty. Southwest is higher. Caution with turbulence. Correct. Because uh, we know caution wake, tur wake turbulence goes behind and out and down. Go down like, yes, it goes down and it goes out, then it uh, goes out, out, down, and behind. Yeah, okay. So, we're 7 Juliet Alpha. Uh, I guess now traffic data clock, one mile opposite direction, 4,600 to setting point 737, caution wake. Right? However, you phrase that. Okay, next. Who's the next aircraft? Okay, so yeah, so like, so we set up with Southwest. He's on the ILS, Alaska 676. We just established, you know, three mile, five mile. Well, I thought it was, you said three miles, but I thought it was five miles. Fathom, uh, cleared ILS 16 right approach. Uh, and we have a uh, sky west is quite high. Um, I would probably turn him towards the north on a 340 heading, descending him down to, I don't know, 2000, I guess. What is he doing? What route is he doing? A uh, route. He's on the Concorde. What does the Concorde immediately tell us an aircraft? Alco heading uh, 340, right? All right, so you should be doing that at least. Dump down to four, good. Next. Can you uh, do that though? Well, he's gone past. The, the, that's what I'm shooting. Right. No, I, I know. I know what you're getting at. That's good. But can oh, you just okay. dump him down to that four altitude? Yes or no? Can I what? Can you dump him down to four thousand right away? Well, yeah, yes. Because who is he in conflict? With? Scan around. So before you, this is a lesson for everybody. Before you issue, this is your mindset that should be you should be getting at is before you issue an altitude or a vector, give a quick look. Right, it's just like driving a car. For those of you who drive a car, right, is look and scan around. Can I do this? Yes, I can. Do it. All right, that should that's how your thought process should be. So guys, fifty ninety six. Who's traffic with him? Uh, are you talking about that PCM? I don't know what the actual. Yes. Uh, 7650. Yes. What trajectory? Traject, uh, trajectory is he? Oh, he's at 7000 on a sort of 120 ish heading. Yes, 110, 120 ish. Yes, right. He's doing 170 over the ground. That means he is traffic with the Skyos. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So, what altitude would you give Skyos now? Uh, well, yeah, that's a good point. So you probably say 8,000. Correct. Maybe. Or Pack Valley dump down, Skywest go down. Does that make any sense? That's how your brain should be working. Or demonstrating to me, at least. What? So, dump down? 
So, Don't so, the sun. so if Pack Valley's in the way, there's two things you can do. You can avoid Pack Valley with Sky West, or you can get Pack Valley out of out of the way for Sky West. Is what Dom's saying. So there's two ways of you you can make it easier. South Sky West needs to go down to like what three four thousand to get onto the final, right? To get to the Isla. Mm. That makes sense. Eventually, he needs to go down to that altitude. Pack Valley is in the way. Pack about where Pack Valley is is where Sky West would be getting into that area where he needs to be down at like three four thousand. So I can get Pack Valley out of the way more. Say hey, Pack Valley seventy six fifty to send a maintain four thousand. Assuming you, I'm assuming he's not going to hit a, a mountain or something, right? So now you have all of that extra altitude. Instead of being okay, Sky was fifty ninety six. I have traffic for you. Maintain eight thousand. Now all of a sudden he's, you know, where he should be at three or four thousand at eight thousand. It's like okay, well now I got to extend him on the down way further. So do two things to to you'll kill two birds with one stone. Pack Valley is also going to Sacramento. He needs to go down too. Get Pack Valley down and out of the way. Then you can get South or sorry Sky West fifty ninety six down even further than you would be. If you didn't move Pack Valley, so put Pack Valley to four before you give Sky West an instruction that gets Pack Valley on the way and out of the way. Then you can say Sky West descend maintain five thousand. You've po positively separated the two, assuming that they descend at normal rates, and you get them both down to an altitude that they need to be at. And use one form of separation. You don't have to use two, right? If you had, you know you're gonna get radar by getting Pack Valley up to the north, then don't worry about the altitude. That that's crosses out. But if you're not. Yeah, that's about where I was going there. I was going to say, wouldn't I put Peck Valley on like a, you know, zero? He's traffic with everybody. Yeah. Well, no, zero seven zero would be what? Traffic with Sky West. You're just basically putting on a base. That's going to be a traffic with everybody. With everybody on the Sutter and Concord. Does okay. that make any sense? So no. there's, there's, two, <laughs> there's two ways you can handle a slow moving prop slash turbo pop like him close as you can to the airport and done or he's last in line those are your only two options there's no in between does that make any sense yes i get what you're saying there it's either that or it's a high performance turbo prop like a pc12 or a king air or something they can sure you treat them like a jet they can probably even do better than a jet at low altitudes like that right maintain a certain speed until a certain point don't be afraid of, of using that if you have to right and they can Drop flaps and and descend at that. But otherwise, so you're saying, you, 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 your your view of Peck Valley would be to point him towards the airport and just get him towards the airport. If you want to, then that means you're gonna have to use you're gonna have to use altitude separation to demonstrate to me that you are taking consideration that, you know, you're taking positive separation measures. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Are they gonna ever hit? Probably not. But then I want you because we're in a in an environment of of training right now, where I want you to show me that. Okay, yeah, you're stopping this guy because of this. Right? I'm you can't be looking. I'm confused. If you've seen him straight to the airport now, how would you fit him into the? No, I'm not saying I would. I'm just saying that if you you have two ways, it's you put him to the airport oh, now, yeah, or he goes last. And given that he's doing 170, everybody else is doing in the 200s and whatnot. Most likely, the Alaska Southwest and they would already pass by the time Pack Valley comes in. That's just how logic works, right? Obviously, you have somebody else, or actually, no, you don't. Yeah, that's your finals are clear after the Alaska and the, the Southwest. Hawaiian's on a base turn. Right. So Hawaiian would have to be going in first. Yep. Or he you put him out, then that means you're punishing him just to get a pack valley in. Does that make any sense? It does. So yeah. try to do this. Um you know, the the best thing that I can do, and I'm still not even very good at it, is like just right here, right now, count off in order out loud. Who's going to the airport in what order? Like make the determination now while it's paused and count off. Okay, uh, let's see. It's pretty obvious. Southwest 319 is number one. Who's? Oh, uh, that's just 676. Okay. All right. Who's number three? 120. Okay. Who's number four? Uh... Guy make, if, you, if it's a tie, make a decision. Somebody's taken first. Uh, okay, I'll probably pack Valley then. 7650. Okay, all right. So pack Valley 7650 is number four to the number four to the runway behind Hawaiian. Who's okay? Who's behind uh, pack? Uh, I go Skywest after that. Who's next? Uh, Southwest 1667. That's all I agree. Yeah, 
Who's next? Leopold. If you don't know, make a decision. It's a decision making thing. I don't know, the exo Okay. okay who's, next? who's next? Uh I don't know what this one's called, but EJA Executive. Is executive jet. Except you don't say executive, you just say exec. Like an exec. Exec eight four jet. one. Yeah, exec jet. Exec jet eight four one. Correct. Okay. Alright, so who's last? Southwest ten sixty one. Perfect. There's your sequence. That's All your right. plan A. If you don't have That's, if that right. doesn't work out, then you go with the plan. Right, which you'll that. figure out as it goes, right? But now right. you have an idea in your head of how okay, I need to worry about this guy first, this guy second, this guy third, and I all I you know at the all, during this entire time, I'm watching the rest of it to see how it's playing out. Does for example, does uh, Southwest 1061 have a 100 knot overtake over Exojet? Nope, he's either matched speed, so that spacing's not going to change, right? All right, well, I've got to worry about uh, fitting ExecJet 841 behind ExoJet 767, so how am I going to do that? I know ExecJet 841 is going to Elko and then turning to a 340 heading, so they'll probably be stacked. So you're, yeah. you're kind of like, as you're saying, like, you know, for example, your Southwest 319 contact tower, you're not necessarily looking at him. You're looking down at ExoJet and ExecJet and seeing how that's going to work so you can plan ahead. But uh, mm -hmm. just kind of constantly be looking from the runway out and count, making you know, kind of count to yourself. All right, this guy's number one. This guy's number two. This guy's number three. And that, if you do that, it's, it's I just it scanning from the inside out. It'll it'll help you a lot. Kind of envision what you need to do next. Cool. And then right, if you start, finish. if you, you know, if you start getting you know uh, behind, work your way from the you know from the last guy in and say, all right, start slowing them back. Give yourself time. So, you know, Southwest 1061 is at 12,000. He can slow all the way back to like 210. And it, it has been done. It doesn't, it's not necessarily the most efficient thing, but it'll give you more time. Just slap a 210 speed on everybody or something like that. Give yourself, everybody should give yourself be doing, time. Everybody should be doing that per the RNAV arrivals, except for the Scouts 1596, who is first and on the Conquer 2. Doesn't, no speed on him, right? And the Tudor guys. Make sense? Kind of. We'll have a go. Okay, let's fire this. Yeah, some more people. Right. Sure. Let me know. Try to watch Dom and see if anybody's. Yeah. I I got everybody descending, but I think I'm I'm not sure. Just make sure. You're, just tell me if one. Okay. Here we go. So we'll start off with the Alaska because the south So Alaska seven sixty seven uh, three miles from Fifth and cleared ILS one six right. Uh, cleared ILS from one six right. Alaska six seventy six. Big Valley seventy six fifty. Decided to maintain four thousand. 4,000 Pack Valley 7650. Skywest 5096. Uh, so you're three, yeah, turn right heading 340 to maintain 5,000. 5,000 send heading 340, Skywest 5096. Uh, do I have to do a traffic call for Southwest? Oh, let's. I hope you don't. Now. I actually don't know how to do a traffic call. Southwest 319's TCAS RA climbing. I don't know what that means. It means they got an RA and they were about to hit. Resolution invite TCAS. Oh, okay. So for those who... Pause it, please. For those, I try not to budge in as much as possible in the scenarios. So TCAS RA... Quick reminder, when an aircraft is per the point sixty five, right? When an aircraft is responding to a TCAS RA, you are just to respond Roger and let them do their thing. Because if you try to intervene by giving another safety or by giving them instruction, it might be in contrary to what their RA is doing. So that's the history of it. Planes have crashed because they listened to the controller instead of what their RA was doing. Right? The RAs will basically speak to each other. One's gonna climb, one's gonna descend, one's gonna turn left. The other is going to turn it, left. It's, the other it's way. only vertical. There's no only vertical. Yeah. Okay. So one's going to climb, one's going to descend, or vice versa. You tell them both, or you tell the other guy to descend, he might descend into the other guy, right? They're going to tell you when their RA is clear of conflict and you resume. That does not, however, stop you from giving a safety alert, right? So in this situation, uh, should be a refresher, traffic alert. 
Southwest 319, 12 o'clock, less than one mile, and then, if advise, applicable, yeah. advise you turn left heading 070, climb and maintain 4000. And that is if before they said they had an RA. If they have an RA, then you say safety alerts or correction, traffic alerts, Southwest 319, 12 o'clock, less than one mile. This is voice 737 descending, so on and so forth. So it's a little bit kind of like a traffic advisory, but then the difference between a safety uh, advisory versus a traffic, sorry, safety alert versus a traffic advisory is you say the words traffic alert or low altitude alert, call sign, check your altitude immediately, or, you know, drive less than uh, 12 o'clock, less than one mile, respectively. So let's go over a traffic call again. Traffic advisories per chapter two of the 71 10.65. Traffic, the term traffic, and then the azimuth of in terms of the clock, right? 12 hour clock, 12 o'clock, miles. miles. Um, so yeah, I believe it's direction that they're moving in eastbound, westbound, or is it altitude? First? 12 o'clock, two miles, southbound, southbound, and then you can go aircraft type, aircraft type, and then altitude. 37, altitude. 2000. In this case, you have radar on them, so you don't say altitude indicates. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, this should be a review to everybody and should not be new to anybody. Is, it, is everybody on board with this? Yeah. Okay. Tony, do you understand that? Yeah. Dude. Okay. Basically, you, you had nothing you could have done at this point. It was already a deal when we started the situation. That, that came to you from the last controller. I'm not harping on anybody, but Alaska 676 and Southwest 319 were already a deal before we even hit unpause, right? They were, you had Alaska going down the final at 290 knots because he didn't slow down like a normal VATSIM pilot. And Southwest was, so you cleared both of them for the approach when you had a conflict. So before you gave Southwest 319 the clearance, or uh, sorry, Alaska, because that was the first thing you did, you should have said, okay, I'm going to clear Alaska 676 for the approach. Does he have traffic? Yes. Southwest 319. What am I going to do about it? Do I want, and then you, so in that, in that moment, you're going to say, okay, I am no longer going to clear this guy for the approach until I fix this problem. Southwest 319, turn left heading 120, maintain this altitude resequence. Alaska 676, cleared approach. No, and then your problem would have been solved. So that's part of the scan. Don't just look at the data block. So, uh, I, I, honestly, I still do this. I look at the data block I'm talking to. You're not having a conversation face to face with the guys. Look at the traffic they're trying not to hit or look at where they're going. So Alaska 676, I'm looking out ahead of him. What's his conflict? Southwest 319. Okay, I need to fix that problem before I clear him for the approach. Get rid of Alaska or get rid of Southwest so you can do let one or the other do the approach. So you had two ways you could have solved the problem, which would be turn Southwest, which is what I would have done, or turn Alaska. Does that make sense, Anthony? Just turn Southwest, did you say? Yeah, because Southwest was... Well, actually, I probably would have turned Alaska. I would have turned Alaska out to the east because... Under Southwest? <sighs> yeah, because Southwest was already cleared for the approach and he's closer to the... This is way out. You're talking about way out before, right? Not when about they yeah, like the fr from like the instant I hit play on this last situation, I would have immediately said Alaska six seventy six turn left, like on like a zero six zero zero five zero, and just made him basically do a three sixty back to the farm. Yeah, I agree. And and put him tuck him behind the other southwest. At that point, you would use divergence. I'm not sure if we talked about divergence as a form of separation there. Does right. that make sense, Anthony? Because yeah. you got a shitty situation. You got a shitty situation, like not going to harp on you, but it's a good example. So, you know, we had two airplanes that were going to occupy the same airspace. You got to make a decision at some point of which one needs to go first. And my personal, what I would have done in that situation is I would have taken Alaska and basically made him do a left 360. So I would have said, you know, turn left heading 360 and then maintain this altitude. If you, you know, he's 2000, probably would have been fine. You put him at a, a left turn, that would put him. Oh, okay. Why wouldn't you put him on a right turn, though? That well, like... what, do you have traffic over there that's coming then in, in towards him? Yeah. Cool. 
So let's not turn them into traffic. You've got a, what is that MVA? 1700 MVA for like another six miles up until the 2000 MVA. So you've got plenty of room to the north to turn them. So just give them a real quick UE and then put them right behind Southwest. Just, you know, turn left hitting 360. As soon as he's clear of the traffic, uh, you know, make a left turn back to the local. It's like going to be two huge turns. It's going to be like 280 degree turns. Intercept the uh, runway 16 right localizer, clear approach. You can kind of envision what he would do there. He'd basically just stay on the final approach course making a 360, but you would be vectoring that 360. All right, let's continue. Yes. Um, Sorry, I'm going to delete... I'm going to delete one of the... Uh, I'm going to delete Alaska. Or actually, I'm going to delete Southwest. And then let's just pretend it's Alaska only. Answer me with your question. No, no, I was going to say how do I deal with that, but you're going to delete it. Yeah. How do I delete Or just leave aircraft? them. Leave them visual separation with the tower. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll just let them go land. They visual should be. Visual separation, they're shipped to the tower. Yes. Okay. All right. You ready, Anthony? Yeah. yeah. Kind of got an idea what you're going to do next? <coughs> Why aren't we talking about using 1 6 left, by the way? Yep. 1 6 left as well, right? So even though that's not the advertised runway, you can utilize it uh, as your instrument approach for guys that are descending on the other side. You know, I, would have put a, I would have put a one six left back, you know, forty miles earlier. And yeah, I would. Set up I would do for one six left. And because we're you know clearing a million and we're not down because if it's IFR, you treat it as if it's a one single runway operation, even though you're using, because you have to still separate planes, right? Versus using visual separation. And that's another thing too. When you yeah, have that mindset, still a three mile set. Yes, it's a three mile set. But then I'm saying you can use visual separation when it's clear in a million like this and still stagger them to come in. That's the whole point of, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Obviously, in these situations, you're always going to be busy. So plan on doing that, right? Plan on your sutter flow, your conquered flow to always be heavy. Your slammer flow, it's going to be like a vent traffic, right? It's going to be heavy. So... Utilize visual separation. Think about what separation am I using? Just like how I discuss with Anthony and everybody else, Sky was 5096 in the Pack Valley. You got to think out that far, right? Whether it's something as simple as as a 7,000 foot altitude, uh, or sorry, a 1,000 foot altitude or a vector like that, you got to think of somebody coming in on a straight in on the tutor versus some guy coming in on the slammer. They're wired. You just got to think of what they're going to do and use that end tool to your advantage and see who goes first. Once you know who goes in first, deal with it, right? Vector somebody, yeah. slow them down. Am I, am I bogarting you, Dom? Because the other choice that you've got when you've got them coming in on a slammer around where November 3, 4, 7 Juliet Alpha is, you can go ahead and just put them on a base and tuck them in yes, behind. Yes, exactly. I was about to say just that, you know, depart okay. Tenko, depart, uh, yeah, depart Hold Tenko on. heading... 270 for or sorry 250 vector to the final approach course does that make any sense yeah so if you've got a straight in coming down the tutor or somebody who's out by uh what is that uh uh tutor yeah the final approach fix or the initial approach fix out there somebody coming straight in that's probably going to beat them it'd be easier to take the guy on the slammer kind of like uh where um the guys like over Tenko there and turn them, take them off the arrival. So depart Tenko heading 270, descend and maintain X, whatever, three, 4,000, put them on a base leg on the opposite side, let the straight in guy beat them and then turn the slammer in behind them. Essentially, you save three to five miles by doing that, by executing that. And that's only if you do something that's out that far. You, and that nothing prevents you from getting them off the arrival in the first place. It's just prepping the pilot, right? You got to think of the pilot's perspective as well. By saying depart Tenko, he has that heading bugged in. By saying turn right heading two seven zero vector, uh, vector to the final approach course, that has to be something done in advance. Because he's reaching, he was not expecting that, right? He's expecting an approach clearance from Zmam, but then you took him off, so he's going to the heading bug, and he's like, you know, uh, trying to rush to to get that heading in for you. Right, so you got to think out far, and that action has to be done out far. That planning has to be done way out far, right? So that's how my mindset is with that. 
All right, let's continue, please. Ready, Anthony? Oh, just quickly, that end tool, uh, doing it, it doesn't work. What do, what do you press? The end tool, and then you, you slew the two targets. End. E-N-D, right below oh, home. E yeah, not, not, oh. not end. Yeah, not November. I That's saw you put it in. <laughs> no worries. Cool. All right. So we discussed this before, right? So nobody has questions about that end tool. Okay. No, 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 no I, knew, I knew about it. I just forgot the, gotcha. uh, the key. All right, let's yeah. go. And if you want to delete a scratch pad, hit period and then slew. So like Pack Valley, hit period and slew. There you go. Now you know where he's going. All right, here we go. Unpaused. All right, then. Um, so we were at... Uh... So I guess Southwest 1061 reduced speed 210 knots less. Uh, 210, Southwest 1061. Exojet 767. Uh, no, what's it? A X, is that's Exojet A, Exo. Oh. It's really easy. Exojet is X, the one with Exo in it. Oh, yeah, Exojet, uh, reduced speed 210 knots less. 210, Exojet 767. And Southwest 1667, reduced speed 210 knots less. 210, South 1667. Alright. Alaska 676, contact the tower. Or tower south six or correction, Alaska 676. Do you want me to flash the ball off to the tower? Uh no. Because I don't want to take him. What's Hawaiian 20 on again? He's on the 1 6 right or? Yep, he's on a base turn for 1 6 right. Oh, cool. Flash them to me, Anthony. I'm. I don't know what my code is, but flash them to me. I'm the M underscore person. Eight, eight, eight. Oh. Expo or sorry, Elkhorn. Uh, cap. Uh, Elkhorn. Southwest three nineteen is going around, heading uh, three zero zero up to two thousand. Uh, Roger. Yeah. So how do I do this? So Hawaiian twenty turn right heading one I don't know one six. Uh, Hawaiian what twenty one six right? I don't know how to make Southwest go around. Oh, just fire up the altitude, fire up the speed. Wouldn't do it. Uh, and Hawaiian twenty uh, to maintain two thousand. Two thousand Hawaiian twenty. Yeah, it won't work. Elkhorn, uh, capital, cancel, and they go around. Gotcha. All right. So... Oh, shit. Uh, Pack Valley 7650, turn right, hitting 17... Oh, 180. And at 180, Pack Valley 7650. God, that's a shit. So, pause. Hit... I'm gonna hit him too. Gonna... Okay, so in stars, when you have a conflict alert like that, what does that prompt? What is that telling you? Something's going on. Oh yeah, something's definitely going. On. But what does what does CA mean? Conflict alert. Yeah, conflict alert, right? So there's there should be predicting. Con I mean, there's no predicting conflict alert in VSRs. So, for example, this exogen, this pack valley, it's not going to flash. It's not going to steadily flash CA, CA at you. It's only going to violate you when you actually violated them, right? So, what does that prompt you to do when there's a CA? You just sit there and watch it, or no, 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 no. So, obviously, missing that, um, you want to get him away from that because you also got the exojet behind him. So, I... yes, but then right when that CA was flashing bright red, what does that tell you? Oh, I'll give a traffic alert. Cool. Yes, yes. Let's practice that phraseology. So, give it to Pack Valley first. Uh, Pack Valley nope. traffic. Uh, again. Is it a? It, it's it's really really simple. There's a traffic point out and there's a traffic alert. What did you have? You had a CA. What does that stand? For? Conflict alert. It has the word alert in it. In that case, you need to issue a safety alert. Traffic alert. 
because you got a collision alert. If it's just a traffic call, like you you saw it ahead of time and you're giving traffic, it's traffic. Right. Think of the T cast when you're playing, it goes traffic, traffic, right? And yeah. because of the imminent of that situation, you gotta think, nope, not the call sign. You gotta that should be your number one go to, right? Traffic alert. Pack Valley seventy six fifty, nine o'clock, less than three miles, opposite direction, Boeing seven thirty seven. Advise you. And then this is where you could be doing that instruction that you were talking about to avoid the exojet, right? Two birds, one stone. So yeah, let's practice. Oh, so I was going to say Pack Valley 760, 7650, traffic alert. Nope. Try again. What did we just talk about? I thought you said you could do the traffic alert call. Yeah. Traffic alert. The, the phraseology was wrong. Try again. Uh, what did I do wrong? Sorry. The, 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 phraseology. the phraseology goes as follows. Traffic alert, Pack Valley 7650. Oh, okay. They've traffic, 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock, less than one mile, northbound 4000, Boeing 737. Advise you turn right and descend and maintain 3000 immediately. And accompany a heading with it too, because right turn would be just right turn forever. That They change that. Yeah, oh, they, they change yeah. that? Oh, okay. So try again, Anthony. So traffic alert, Pack Valley, 7650, less than three miles, Boeing uh, 737, northbound, uh, turn right immediately to 190. Try again. So traffic alert, Pack Valley, 7650, nine o'clock, less than three miles at that point i would not even care if it's even like one or two miles i'll just say less than three miles when it's less than three miles that means you're less than your your separation minima less than three miles i don't care about the aircraft type at that point I advise you turn right heading 270 or whatever it is heading 190 and the send to maintain 2000 immediately right so when a conflict alert comes up or when a low altitude alert comes up, you have to analyze it. That's a that's a key yeah, thing you the, you gotta. Sorry, the one thing that fucked me off there uh, fuck, got me confused. Sorry, is you said in the first one you said opposite direction. Right. You could add that if you want, but then I would keep it as short as possible because you got a shit ton of stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. Unless you want to add stuff. Yes. Can you give a traffic alert in an in anticipation of a conflict? No, then that's not. No, at that point you saw it early enough, and you can take positive yeah. control yeah, you and. Can prevent the conflict alert in the first place okay you, so I'll, I'll try and say it and apologies if i mess it up so. no that's why we're here so uh, try tra uh, so traffic alert pack valley 7 7650 traffic less than three miles uh opposite direction advise you turn right immediately heading 200 turn right head it's just like you giving out a heading instruction right pack valley oh, 650 okay. right Advise, alert. Yep, I advise right. you turn right heading. Advise you turn right heading 200 or 190. Right. Get right just like I, I, I would guess you'd do a, you'd do a 360. Yeah. I would just turn them, turn, turn them 180 degrees eventually. Just turn yeah, right. Yeah. Get, and the easiest thing for pilots, north, south, east, and west. I know exactly where north is. I know where south is. I know where east is. And I know where west is. Basically all the time. It's labeled on my my... DG, turn right heading 270 to send and maintain 2000. And okay. it's done because now you know he's basically going to make an entire 180 degree turn. It eliminates the conflict with Exojet 767 and it gets him going away. So you've solved all your problems with one, one call. You don't need to like do three different things, talk to three different airplanes. It's one airplane, even though it's already a deal, you've solved it right away. And that's what I'm trying to get at is when you see a conflict alert or a low altitude alert, or if they bust an MVA or whatever it may be, the situation, analyze it. Please, please, please analyze it. Just because it gives you a warning does not mean, oh shit, oh shit, give out the safety alert right away because then you just made a fool of yourself, right? And you're not thinking. Remember, I will always remind you this. The push to talk button is not a push to think button, right? You, Right now in a training environment, sure, you can mess up as much as you want. You can think as much as you want. But out there, you got to know what you're going to say, right? Because you don't want to sound like a fool. You don't want to You don't want to send him into a double deal by sending the Pack Valley below the MVA or turn him into a different aircraft just because you did not analyze that quickly, right? So in my head, what's going on right now is, okay, 
okay, these two are obviously traffic. So I'm going to turn Pack Valley out. What is it going to be up to the north heading? Pick one and do it and stick with it. Don't overthink the situation and ascend them. Right? How's that going to sound like? Phraseology comes out my mouth now. Traffic alert, Pack Valley 7650, 9 o'clock, less than three miles. Advise you turn right heading 200 and descend and maintain 2000 immediately. You see how that sound? There's no uh, there's no ums, right? You're in a stern voice, a parent voice of saying, yo, there is a situation right now. Do this, this, and this immediately, right? I'm doing it slow as well. I'm not like, uh, oh, traffic layer, pack valley, 650, at nine o'clock, less than three miles, advise you turn right into 270, descend into 2000 immediately. You did not, you made the problem 10 times worse than solving the problem, right? There's a difference between spitting out instructions and, and getting them on a timely manner and a certain voice, right? Okay, so let's continue, please. So I'm going to assume that Pack Valley was given a 270 heading down to 3,000. How does that work, uh, Ant? Okay. That way, so you see where he's going to go. He's going to go back out to the west, and he's going to descend. Okay. Give me one second to actually get that to do it. And... All right, here we go. We're paused, unpaused. Okay, so yeah, so okay, that's what he's doing. So Sky West 50, 96, turn right heading uh, 0, 070. I think 070, so seven, zero, seven, zero, uh, correction, Sky West 50, 96. Hawaiian oh, Air down to 20, or 2. Ah, uh, Hawaii. Or sorry, Hawaii. I'm, I'm reminding uh, Trevor. Oh, yeah, so Sky is 5096 to see to maintain 2000. 2000, 5096. So it's southwest 1667 to see to maintain 2000. 2000, south 667. Oh, I can't do that. No. Disregard. <laughs> All right, south 1667, we'll stay at 4000. Yeah. And oh, did you want to Hawaiian 20 to intercept the localizer? We got the airport in sight. Uh, Hawaiian 20, if you've got the airport, cleared visual approach, runway 16. Cleared for the visual approach, 16. Cleared visual 16, right, Hawaiian 20 heavy. You had it right the first time. Cleared visual approach, runway 16, right? Keep it short okay. and sweet, right? Okay. Cleared for the cleared visual approach, right? Uh, Scars 1596, turn right heading 04, no, 070. I don't know if I said that already. Uh, 070, Scars 1596. Oh, hey, Dom, how do you get rid of that, that converging line? End tool, end turn. Thank you. Pack Valley 7650 has got the airport in sight. He didn't turn, damn it. Just keep go with it. He's got the airport in sight. Oh, okay. Um... You got the room. Oh, do you? All right, Pack Valley 7650, clear visual approach, runway 16. Good, the visual 16, right, Pack Valley 7650. Uh, do you want us to keep the speed up? Uh, yes. Roger. Uh, Hawaiian 20, slow to your final approach speed. Slow to final, Hawaiian 20. Yeah, I'm confused. Which one? Oh, oh six, six, fucking. Six, seven, ten, right, heading, zero, 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 zero. No. All right, heading 070 south to 1667. Yeah, your scope's stupid. Is there no other way? No, there is. No. Cumbersome. And high tech is lost by now. I told him to turn around. Um, oh, that yeah, guy. I got, no, I didn't. Can we pause? I've got oh, two shit, screaming shit. kids behind me. I need to sort out. Alex, you're up. Yeah. Sorry. Prime in.
Why is he turning left? Um, the heading thing is it chooses the closest. Damn, hold on, hold any. on, hold on. Pause it, please. Just pause it. I don't know why these guys are turning left. I'm just dragging the heading to the right. Make it uh, slower intervals. Uh, actually, no, no. I'm slowing him and it's not picking him up. It's because Anthony left and still has track. No, I'm still here. How do I hand them over? To our tablet. Like the ones that are flashing at me, I'm slowing them and they're not picking up. There's none flashing at you. Unless Anthony had handed him over to you. Hit escape. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. When I put a space bar in the tab. That's the worst. Which one? Sorry about that, Bill. Oh, you're fine. Your children uh, take precedence over this anyway. Let me know when you guys are set. Dom, how do you make them turn the correct direction? So, what? You're dragging the heading dude bit by bit, so that makes so they're on a three forty, right? Try to do them on a zero one zero and do it bit by bit. Fuck. And drag it to the right or to the left? Uh, to the right. Yeah, that's what I did. That would be if our guy keeps going in circles, so I get the conflict alert every few seconds. That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be an uh, RA every time we go by. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let's be a bar and 300 feet apart with an amount of disaster. Can you? No. Okay, fine. I'll do that. Hey, what's up, Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. We're on Sweatbox, by the way, if you want to join in the set. So, um, should I say my plan? Yeah, go ahead. Do it right now. All right, so uh, he's clear for the approach. I'm going to get him off. He's too high and he's in conflict okay. with the line. I'm going to turn him to make a base on the other side of the approach from where most of them are going. I think that's a left. Yeah, left, left, uh, left downwind, left downwind, and then I'm turning back in later. Uh, I'll turn in the southwest right now to send him, then give him a visual approach. Uh, since these guys are a disaster up here in the north, I'll fix that. Uh, I'll turn exec jet back, back around. I'll turn uh, high tech back around to send him. I'll terminate Julia Alpha. That's what okay. I'm and I've, that's a good plan. So if, I, what I'm forgetting about in stars is when you start opening up stars in the area that you're type in e or dot econ. That should uh, dot econ. econ. Yeah, like e c o n. That means area e uh, combined for your tags. So that means you get auto track for your. Uh, for, if that makes any sense. In your area. Dot econ E C O N. Yeah. It said unknown commander alien. Yeah, I think that's one of your personals, Don. Uh, auto auto track. 
KSMF, KMHR, KSAC works though. Yeah. Huh, I thought it was in the aliases in the adaptation. So many different revisions have come out. Not everybody's got all the That's why I asked them in the first place. I was like, hey, everybody got 2004. I think I have a little bit of layer one. My airspace one is 14, so I'm going to update up. But, That's why I asked in the beginning, guys. Well, I didn't realize, but we can keep going. All right, we got this all straightened out, or? Yeah, this is VFR, guys. 200, so 1,200. I mean, it's a 3,000 shouldn't be where right now. It's, I don't know what direction really everyone's going. I have a kind of idea. Skywest is on a base turn. He's, like, actually turning onto the base now in a left turn. Southwest 1667 is making a left 270 to the base and Exojet's on the down. Okay. So is Southwest 1061. Give him the, uh, you got your predicted track lines on? Yeah, and, oh yeah, I can do that too. Oh yeah. Can I give a uh, traffic or like an airport call on the raw? Can I say, you know, Southwest 1061 on the raw at the airport? Hell yeah. Yeah, okay. Nothing stops you. There's nothing that stops you from asking if he has the airport in sight on the downwind. Oh, I hate that when I get that as a pilot, though. Like, I want to turn around. I want to look behind me. And... Yeah, I remember my OTS on Area E where I let gave a a uh, visual when he was on the downwind and he turned really right in. Yeah, I prefer to put him on a base first, even though that might screw me over in the end, but it just, I just, as a pilot, I just hate getting the... As a pilot, I love getting that because it means I can turn direct the numbers and get out of your hair and get out, get get on the ground. If you've got the guy in the front, yeah, like, if you got the guy in the front, go for it. Okay. We're kind of up on time, let's go. Uh, Southwest 1061, descend and maintain 2000 terrain, 070, the airport's at your uh, 5 o'clock in uh, one zero miles report. What happened to your plan that you were telling me? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Slow down a bit. Okay. Pack Valley 7650, cancel approach clearance, uh, climb and maintain 4000, and uh, turn left, left turn heading 070. Heading 0704000, Pack Valley 7650. Southwest 1061 on the road. The airport will be at your uh, 2 to 3 o'clock in 1111. Southwest 1061, airport in sight. Southwest 1061, cleared visual approach, runway 16 right. Cleared visual 16 right, Southwest 1061. Um, Grove. Uh, exp- Grove. Uh, over. Over Julia Alpha Kilo Airport at the 7,000. I'll turn it back. And what about him? He's uh, about the best airspace. I'll turn him left. Um, what do you exit jet 41 point uh, out or put? Uh, high tech 3546. High tech 3546 point out or put? Uh, X. High tech. Yeah. 3546, turn left, left turn, heading 360, vector 2 to final. Heading 360, left turn, high tech 3546. Skywest 5096, uh, 50, turn right, heading 070. 070, who is that for? 5096, you're going north there. Be Skywest 5096, heading 070. November 347, Juliet Alpha. Radar services terminated. Squawk VFR frequency shape. Seven so Juliet Alpha. See you. Park Alaska 359, uh, 1000, Clubman 4000, heading zero. Alaska 359, knock out departure, radar contact. I'm going to maintain flight level 190. One, one out of Alaska 359. Southwest 1667, turn right, heading 070, descend and maintain. Uh, actually, remain that altitude for traffic at your 3 o'clock, 1000 below is a. Uh, VFR target um, air- aircraft uh, type of known altitude indicates 3000. All right, heading 070 south of 1667, looking. Uh, 
Pack Valley, 7650, turn left heading uh, 340. Heading 340, Pack Valley, 7650. Oscar, 359, traffic 12 o'clock, 3 miles. Uh, a uh, Cessna 208 climbing, or correction, at 4000. He's eastbound turning north of Horton site. We're looking at Alaska 359. Alaska 359, turn left heading. Uh, uh, correction, turn right heading. Th uh, turn right heading, 030 zero, zero vector. 030 zero, zero heading, Alaska 359, climbing. Southwest 1667, uh, expect vector across down approach course for sequencing. 1667. Southwest 1667, you can descend and maintain 2000 and the turn right heading 170 report uh, at the airport will be at your three o'clock in two, two zero miles. All right, right turn heading 170, port and site southwest 1667. Exojet 767, turn right heading 070. Heading 070, Exojet 767. I check 3546, confirm left turn, left turn now heading 340. Uh, high tech 3546, yeah, we're in the left turn now. Uh, exec jet 841, turn left heading 340. In uh, 340, all the way down uh, there. Exec Exec jet jet eight. All right, Alaska pause for a second, please. 359, proceed direct, red bluff. Red bluff, Alaska 3. Pause it, please. It, it should be. Okay. Okay, so I feel like I'm on I'm on coffee, even though I'm not on coffee. So the thing is, I won't say it. Sky, what, what do you think of uh, Alex's performance right now? I think it's good, but he's taking a lot of time on headings. Hmm. What? Uh, what more? Um, I don't see too much wrong with Roast this guy. Yeah, fucking come at me. Shanath. Uh... Um, I think you're putting a lot of unnecessary phraseology, like, you know repeating stuff like left turn um thinking about it a lot about a heading um yeah. uh, so thinking before you're talking would help uh clean up the phraseology and also keep it concise so you can kind of keep your scan going and uh you hit three people in the time that it took you to hit one okay. precise so then that's exactly what i want to get at right so you're spitting out instructions right you're you're your adrenaline's coming high. You're like, oh, we've got a lot of traffic. I got to do this. We got to do that. I got to do this, do that. But you're not actually prioritizing it. You're not letting your brain do the thinking and analyzing what you're doing. So let's start off with the Alaska 359, right? Or let's start out actually with the Southwest 1667. Turn on the base. Your plan was to Southwest 1667, uh, you know, turn right heading 070 on the rollout. Airport would be this, right? By spitting out instructions like that, let's think of precise instructions smarter instructions shorter instructions that would get the message across right instead of like what sky said in the form of southwest 1667 turn rating 070 to set maintain 2000 uh airport uh air, airport five o'clock this this and that as a pilot what what, what when you hear a controller say all that what do you think what the fuck did he just say right so what sky is saying is make it one or split it into two or three transmissions that make it efficient as well as you know getting your point across. So south of 1667, turn right heading 070 to set of maintain 2000. Perfect. That's one transmission. South of 1660, as, as you see them turning, south of 1667, as you turn the airport, three o'clock, uh, one five miles reported site. Right? Two transmissions. I you hear me do that all the time because then if you put an all in one. First of all, he's not going to read it all back correctly. Number two, what? Oh, what, what are you, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Yeah. What are you? Can, can you say the heading again? Can you say the altitude again? One of those two, or even both? Can you say all? 
Yeah, send me to inspection, and then once he gets all that done, then you're finding yourself to say report when you have the airport in sight and constantly reminding him because he didn't he didn't retain any of that, right? And and, and neither did you, right? So space those instructions out. It's a technique. It's an art. It's a form, right? It's it's you get it's just something you got to practice. Those two guys up top, sure, you're working them out. Cool. Um, Is they are they too far to intercept the localizer? 18 Probably, miles, 20 but to they're 18 too, not too far to intercept the final approach course. Yeah, 18 to 20 miles is, is something that should get... Use all the tools you have, right? As a pilot, you should be uh, trying to retain back all this information. Oh, I've, I've heard of a controller did this before. Try this out. So Skywest 1596, proceed direct, tutor, right? That should still retain in his FMC. Or sorry, not tutor. Um, he should have loaded something up along whatever you tell him to expect, right? Expect the ILS or one six right approach. That should have prompted him to put the ILS in his FMC. He has an initial approach fix in there. So yeah, it's 1596, receive direct tutor, right? As most likely what he can expect, and that gets him there. And then, so yeah, it's 1596, proceed direct tutor, at tutor, intercept or one six right, localizer. Done. Altitude with him, he's set. Same thing with the Exeget. Exeget 767, proceed direct uh, tutor, at tutor, intercept one six right, localizer. Say Sky was 1596, proceed direct tutor at tutor cross, or cross tutor at or above 2000, cleared ILS runway 16 right approach. Or? I don't see why not. But then again, remember what Trevor said. You're clearing them from out that far. You're giving them, giving them freedom, them. right? Unless you assign a speed. You can do that, but it's a mouthful, right? You just want them to get to the area and fix up this, this fuck up, right? Basically, my general rule of thumb is I don't clear them for the ILS until I know I'm comfortable clearing them for the ILS. If there's no nobody else that's in conflict and stuff, sure, I'll do it. If I'm figuring out a sequence, hell no, I'm not going to clear an ILS. I'm going to get them established. I'm going to get them on a speed. I'm going to micromanage them in a way I want them so that it'll be perfect the way I want it. You're the controller, right? You're not the pilot, right? You're, you're not the observer. You're the controller. Get this correct, right? Because right now you're in a situation where Sky West is doing 120 over the ground for some goddamn reason. You're clearing for the approach. She's going to stay at 120. Chances are it's going to do that. Extra Jet's going to run a that's that's how it's going to be, okay? Uh, the southwest again. What Sarnas said, it's not a push to think, right? If you see what the traffic is, so the sixteen sixty seven, maintain four thousand, not maintain present altitude, right? Maintain four thousand for traffic. Expect lower in thirty seconds if if you want to say that. Another technique for the sky west and the exojet there, they're so far out on a tangent from the localizer, you can even get them on a heading to intercept, right? Like I'll tell you right now if he's on a about a 130 or 140 right that should get him if you draw that line he should be able to intercept the one six right localizer at at that point wherever you see the localizer start to dot off and those two x's are right there that represents where the localizer is end point is kind of at 18 miles or 20 miles from the airport is when you should be able to pick up in theory at least for the on the flight sim side to pick up the localizer right so if you put them on a heading, when able during the one six rate localizer, you put it on them to fly that procedure. It's a conditional clearance that you just instruction that you gave them to do instead of micromanaging them at that point, right? That that's to your tool, so you can go work on something else. So this departure, you knew about this Alaska theory for the night. I saw you track them up, and there was a rolling call for it. So you got to picture that in your head, and you got to think out ten miles out, right? This Pack Valley, you're like, cool. I'm gonna put them out on a northerly heading. Oh shit, there's this jet that's coming out on a zero one zero heading, right? So chances are, if you didn't touch them, they're going to hit. You did something about it, but then is it the best technique to do it, right? No, you panicked, and you're like, uh, uh, Alaska 359, fly flighting 030, right, to get that divergence in. Good use of divergence, but then now you're turning them back to red bluff is what you're doing, right? So well, he's, he's at 5,500, so he should be. Exactly. He's going he's gonna to climb well. Yeah, so yeah, what you should have done, yeah, what you should have done is either uh, – once he's radar identified on that left hand turn to 010, Alaska 359 proceed direct. What is that going to get you get him to do? It's going to go direct red. Yeah, if he's not going to do it fast enough, Alaska 359, turn left heading 330, and that's from my knowledge of where red bluff is. Turn left heading 330, vector to red bluff, expect right? Okay. Left heading 330, he's, he's already on a heading bug when he departed. That's going to get him to turn even faster okay. and avoid. You're going to get divergence on the pack valley, but he's going to get on his way is what I'm trying to get at, right? Right now, you're, you're crisscrossing traffic and waiting for him to get above on an altitude, things like that. That's just legal, sure, 
bad practice for sure. You're just right. adding more to your plate. Can I get, uh, can I get one, one more Kilo November's track? Because, uh, oh no, he's too high. Yeah, don't worry about him. Just slow down, you know, take whatever's in your airspace and, and, and th put a thought process through that. Until you do that, then you can work on on other things. So I, uh, I, uh, I have jet to Grove as well. Well, you already worked that out, did you not? No, I pointed out. Oh, I guess I pointed out exact. Well, he said point out approved extra jet. I was trying. And the high tech, right? Those those two guys point out approved. That's what you, that should prompt you. Yeah. When you coordinate with somebody, what type of coordination is it? Is it going to be an apric? Is it going to be a point out? Is it going to be a handoff? Right? If you just say, hey, this guy's doing this, that's more like an informational pass. Okay. What are you trying to get accomplished? It's a point out, right? Point out. Yeah. Grove point out uh, over the uh, was it Henderson JAQ yeah. airport high tech thirty five forty six southeast bound request control, right? Okay. Okay. Tom, yeah. Why not keep Alaska three fifty nine and three thousand on that or initial radar contact, and then you just go and put them under. Yeah, the that. Rally and I was about to say that too. Yep, that's, that's stupid. When I say I'm about to say that. But then it's a jet. It's a high performance jet. You want to get them climbing. You don't want to level them off at three, right? The, the whole point of this departure is to get them out of your airspace, climbing, and direct somewhere out of your hair, right? So keep them climbing. He's going to top the, the the caravan and it's going to go on his way. But then if you were going to do this 340 heading, I would add on the three. It's either, I mean, again, use one type of separation. Do not use more than one type. You got to demonstrate to me and the instructors and the mentors that you're using the right form of separation, right? If you're going to do overprotective and use divergence and altitude, that's too much. I'll ding you on that, right? So I want you to demonstrate to me and you know which type of separation you're using. Right here, you're, I already gave you the answer, right? Well, he, was, he was, yeah, he was getting, um, at the time I was putting in the divergence, the altitude wouldn't have been enough, but now I can, now that it is well, right, but then now that you have divergence, altitude is not a problem. If you have divergence, it's altitude yeah, yeah, is not yeah, a problem, yeah. right? I know. I was just saying at the time that I gave him the divergence, the altitude would be a problem once you lost the lateral. Correct. So, so yeah. That's why I did some, but I guess it was more of a panic vector just to get him safely away. Right. Okay, last item. High tech 3546. You know he's down there. You probably don't have your MVA map up. What do you think? That's a fucking black hole, dude. That's 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 the Sierras out there, right? Uh, so you know your terrain along that area. That's the Sierras. That's it's gonna increase, and that's an eight thousand foot MVA. Okay. So if you knew, if you let's say you did have the MVA map up, I'll give you the benefit. Of, you say fly heading three four zero. That's gonna put him in the eight thousand foot MVA, mm -hmm. right? So in that instruction, high tech thirty five forty six turn left heading three. What is it three zero zero and expedite. Right, you're fixing one problem, but you're half-assing fixing. If that makes any sense, right? That's that's the least we should do. Is it's you fix it, you fix it all the way. He's already going to be in the eight thousand. I'll give him a little altitude alert. Correct, and it's probably not going to beep at you. Honestly, dude, you're never going to know it. But I see. Correct. Okay. All right, continue, please. Uh, this guy was fifty ninety six. Uh, turn right, direct, tutor, and intercept the runway at one six right low. Direct tutor to intercept the localizer, Skywest 5096. High tech 3546, uh, low, altitude, low altitude alert, high tech 3546, MVA in your area is 8,000, advise you climb and maintain 8,000. High tech 3546, climb to 8,000. Check your altitude immediately, the MVA in your area is 8,000. Exojet 767, turn right, direct tutor, intercept the runway 16 right localizer. Direct tutor, exec jet 767. Uh, exec jet 841, turn left heading 340. Uh, 340, exec jet 841. Southwest 1667, uh, airport's at your 12 o'clock in 1 Uh, airport site south 1660. South 1667 cleared visual approach from 16 right. Clear visual 16 right south 1667. Um, will you take the center handoffs? 
flashes three times, you can switch. Uh, I did you who are you handing? Yeah, I just, you sent him to the right guy. I haven't sent him to anyone yet, but I was just wondering if you sent him to the right to guy, Dom. it flashes three times, you switch him. Hard for you to change. Cool. Someone just said switch him to Dom. Someone said, okay, Alex, just do what I say, just flash it to the right person, okay. flashes three times. Or that's indication of radar identified. Sorry, radar contact. Exojet 767, descend and maintain 2,000 and uh, reduce to slowest practical speed. 2,000. Uh, Exojet 767. Uh, uh, what's that guy's name again? P what's Pack again? Valley. Pack Valley, 7650, turn left heading. You cut out. Uh, Pack Valley, 7650, turn left heading uh, zero, correction, 2990, descend and maintain 2000. 2290, heading Pack Valley, 7650. Someone's not taking their hand off the center. What do we say about that? I flashed him. Three if it flashed, times. You, that means if it flashes three times, literally, like the data block flashes three times. I'm going to pause it for just one second. It flashes three times. You send them, and then that counts as a radar. Meaning you put C42 or C41, whatever it is, in there. It flashes three times. It, you know how it blinks? It blinks three times. Yeah, but it's not. That's not taking, but then I'm saying for simulation purposes, consider oh, that to be radar. Oh, okay. Yes. Did you switch to the south of 1667? Alex? Sorry, I had to no, 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 no. order food with my parents. Okay, Southwest 1667, contact uh, Capital Tower. What's your frequency? Capital Tower is uh, 125.7. Tower South 1667, see ya. Don't wait on those guys, right? When you got nothing else to do, flash them, switch, or flash them, let them take it, switch it over, right? So you're, I'm not, I can't see what you're doing, but then. So south of 1667, clear visual approach, runway 16 right, or whatever, clear Alice, runway 16 right approach, flash to the tower, after, make that into a habit, right? Clear approach, flash to the tower, tower takes it, contact the tower, at least, you know, 10 miles out or something. If you have nothing else to Treat it as a three flash thing. Or you can flash it to me, doesn't matter. Did it unpause or not? No, it didn't. It did for a bit. It should be going now. Parch American 590 is out of uh, 500 on the uh, second. American 590, North Carolina, Parch Radar. Copy. Contact. Let me maintain. Uh, let me maintain flight level 190. You're breaking out. Hold your push and talk a little bit long. American 590, North Carolina, Parch Radar. Contact. Let me maintain flight level 190. 190, American 590. Back Valley, 7650, turn left, heading uh, 240. 240, Pack Valley, 7650. Alaska, 359, contact Oakland Center on, uh, contact Oakland Center, 125.85. 2585, uh, whoever that was. 
I'll ask you three for now. Let's go. It's 5096 uh, airports at your 12 o'clock in Tuesday. Insight. 5096 cleared visual approach from only 16 right. Clear Division 1, 6 right, Sky was 5096. Should a CRJ be doing 120, 20 miles out from the airport? No. Should no. Yeah, Sky was 1596. Clear Visual Approach, running 1, 6 right, maintain 170 knots until a 5 mile final, right? Sky was uh, 1596, maintain 170 knots until 5 mile final. 170 to 5, Sky was 96. Because you're trying to create a hole between the Skywest and the Exeger, unless you're getting the Pack Valley in for the 16th. Um, okay. I guess I turned it up a bit too many. Pack Valley 7650, turn right 10. Uh, 10 no, just just wait. <laughs> let, let it play out. Let it play yeah. out. Okay. He's doing 90 over the ground, right? Yeah. Skywest is going to speed up, right? That means you should have three. Watch, just, just let it happen. Pack Valley, 7650 traffic, 12 o'clock, 3 miles, a, uh, uh, on the localizer, southbound, a Cessna, or CRJ 200 at 2000. Got uh, Sky West in sight, Pack Valley, 7650. Pack Valley, 7650, follow the traffic, clear to visual, approach runway 16 right. Follow them, clear to visual, uh, 16 right, Pack Valley, uh, 76. Exojet 767, uh, traffic is at your 10, it's moving 11 o'clock in 6 miles, a uh, Cessna 208 uh, westbound to join the localizer at 2004. Exojet 767 is looking for the caravan. Exojet 767, uh, do you have that traffic in sight? Exojet 767, still looking. Exojet 767, uh, turn left heading uh, 070. I think 070, Exojet 767. All right, pause. All right, while you're talking, I got to go move my car real quick. Okay, I'll be right sounds back. good. Sky, you're up. Debrief Sky okay. real quick. Do you Thanks mind if waiting. I uh, restart yep. my Discord real quick? I've yep. been having yep. connection drops all day. Yep, do what you gotta do. Someone's gonna pull him back in. Quite the information overload. Yep. There's no other way. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. You guys had two to three sessions with Doug. Doug did his best and gave you information overload. Now we got to, even now it's not perfect, right? We got people who's not even part of the session they're supposed to be, like people like Carter, for example, people Max, he had his personal reasons, right? Well, to be fair, Rowan's had a lot of time. Yeah. And the other guys have, have had really very little because uh, I'm still figuring out how to teach this, uh, Don. Yeah, I know. I'm, I am too. It's changing. I haven't done one with Doug, just saying. No, Anthony hasn't done anything with me, so there we are. Oh, Should that's why. Prime before flashing them, Tim? Or... It doesn't matter. Just okay. do whatever. Because I was wondering if they'd have the same tag signature, if it would, like... It wouldn't matter. Okay. Tom, are you using Euroscope or ACSIM? Uh, I'm using ACSIM for the departures. Euroscope is handled by Trevor for for the arrivals, and we haven't used that for months, so imagine if a shit show of that. <laughs> Did you make Euroscope files for all the airports? Yeah, we just converted from ACSIM to... It was from that ESE, the uh, situation editor thing. You just save it, import it and save it as a... 
I have the repository here. I'm just going to have to share it again for everybody. And people made their own scenarios too. Yeah, I just remember AC Sim being like absolute garbage. Yeah. Can't handle a lot of volume on AC Yeah, but getting Euroscope aircraft to take off is my uh, sore spot. So. Yeah. Have to taxi um, into just the right place. Dom, so for the for the uh, God, I keep getting his name. For the Sky West and the guy behind him who's joining, pay, pay, what do I keep forgetting? PCM. Pack Valley. Pack Valley. Okay, so Pack Valley and Sky West. Pack Valley said he had the visual. He was cleared for the approach visually, um, following the guy. But then there was a conflict alert where he was probably within the three mile. He was it within the three miles, so um, I know that that's like, like he's supposed to maintain his separation, but it's still like a separation bus, not on my end. But did you? Oh, you said visual separation was applied. Yeah, visual separation was applied. That's, that's his on his on Pack Valley. Yeah. So it's his separation bus, but do I? Still well, there's no bus. He doesn't no know what three miles is. So then it's not a situation that I need to resolve. No, you're good. It's visual separation means they have each other in sight and the pilots, it will be the pilot's responsibility to maintain lateral and vertical separation from each other until they can't see each other again. Okay. So... Bring me up real quick. The Pack Valley and the Sky West. Does the Exojet in the Pack Valley have visual? No. So I sent him left around. Who? I sent Exojet zero seven zero. He gave wow. him more space. Then I turn him back in. Space for who? Pack Valley is a sixteen knot overtake. Wait, is the Pack Valley for sixteen right as well? Okay. Bad idea. No, I was just asking because I didn't know. I thought he was for the one six left. So he'd probably overtake for the other side as well, which would not have the staggered approach. How far? How distant are the runways? Isn't it like more than twenty five hundred? I would. Okay. So then, staggered. If you had someone overtake on the staggered approach, would that still be legal? Uh, depending how much you have between the stagger. Right, isn't it two and a half on the staggered within 2,500? I don't remember. Okay, so... I mean, you're, you, you're utilizing both visual approaches and ILSs, right? So right. it's it's got to be both ILSs in order for you. Mm -hmm. that... Was this Alaska in my airspace? I'm not talking about... Oh, wait, no, he's just kidding. It's the departure. Don't talk to me. Sky, are you ready? Yeah, I think I fixed the drops, but if I randomly don't respond, then uh, something's going on. Very good. Okay, so type in dot econ. Okay. You do have the latest adaptation for stars, right? Yeah, it works. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, you primed up? Uh, one moment. If he's not, doesn't matter. You can still hand off to him, and when he primes up, it just changes the tags. But then the soul. Uh, trap alert uh, Sector jet seven sixty seven traffic twelve o'clock, less than three miles. Uh, advise you turn left heading zero seven zero immediate. Okay, cool. Eject jet. I'm not doing that. Okay, well. I need him to go away from his heading because I gave him a turn. Trevor, you back? It's either that or somebody else is on Euroscope in the other part of the U.S. and they're fucking. All right, sure. Uh, Pack Valley 7, Traffic Alert, Pack Valley 7650, six, traffic. Uh, nah, I don't know what a block that would be. That would be 5 o'clock in less than 3 miles. Advise you to uh, climb and maintain this. Uh, I'm back. 
Hey, your scope started running. So oh yeah. Did you? Oh, no. did you start it? No. It's inadvertently. Really? Did it just like start on its own? Someone probably. Oh, somebody else on the network's yeah. on Euroscope, huh? All right, let's run it. Let's go. Well, can you get exact jet out of the way? Turn him left. Yeah. And, did, and then he's now conflict, and I gave him trap door, and he bolted. <laughs> so now I wallop him. Um. All right, Sky, you ready? You primed up. Yep. Once this conflict goes away, we can. Get he's in the turn. Right, Who's so in the turn? Exo Jet. Contact uh, Sacramento Tower. Correction. Ca contact Capital Tower. One two five point seven. Tower. Skies fifty nine sixty. Yeah. Departure skies fifty eighty five is uh, one thousand one fifty. Skies fifty eighty five. I'm not gonna approach your radar contact. Call me maintain five thousand. Five thousand skies fifty eighty five. All right. So what's your thing? Five E. American 590s climbing to 190. Roger. I'm not talking to November 757 Zulu Zulu yet. Uh, I'll send him over to the track. Just assume he's checked in. in. Okay. I was I was gonna check in, but then it. Trevor, November 7577. Uh, maintain VFR altitude of 5,000. Correction of 6,000, and a crossover at the capital midfield. That's shit phrase all Jews in it. No, that's right. Okay. Try again. November 757 Zulu Zulu. Uh, maintain VFR altitude. Uh, maintain. Drop the uh, main, Drop the altitude. Number 7 Zulu Zulu. Maintain VFR, VFR at, at 5,500. Good. Yep. And cross over the capital midfield. The capital? So he goes to the city now? Or? Capital airport midfield. Okay. Uh, extra jet seven sixty seven turn left heading two seven. Heading two seven zero. Uh, exo jet uh, was that uh, exo jet seven. Exo jet seven sixty seven eight room. Okay. Okay. Um, Pack Valley seventy six fifty contact Capital Tower one two. Uh, five point seven. Or Tower Pack Valley seventy six fifty good day. So you heard the um, so Sky, you heard the uh, transfer of the two guys on final. Exec Jet is coming north. I'll give him. He's uh, down there. He's going to uh, Cap the uh, Capital Capital Airport. I just forgot to turn him. This guy went across to me. Their localizer again because I'm an idiot. He is high tech. Thirty five forty six. You're probably gonna want to turn him around. Uh, you heard November 757 Zulu over the midfield at 5,500. Can you send United, Dom? What United? Uh, 2005, I, I think you have him. And then that's a Jeff Jet. He's uh, now turning left uh, 270. I'll probably intercept. No, this is your scope. We're in South Ops, uh, running the 16s. Uh, weather is clear. Visual approaches are good. Guy. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, let's see. Is uh, American 590 over to center yet? American 590 is not over to center. He's still with you. Roger. And then, uh, what is, uh, what call sign is, uh, Hotel Gulf Tank? Who? Oh, high uh, tech. 35, 46. High tech. High tech. Okay, what's high tech and doing? Then, uh, Sky was checked in with you. You don't have the track because someone else picked him up. Uh, Did you hear what Sky was saying, Alex? What What is high tech? High tech. Uh, he's on a uh, on a heading. That heading. Roger. He's on a heading of uh, two ninety. And, okay. Uh, and he's 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 going for the Mather. He's going to two left at Mather. You should turn it back around. I just uh, forgot about him. You got okay. an American there. He's over the exec jet. Exec jet's landing capital. Uh, you should probably do what you want with him, but turn him back is what I'd recommend. Any question? Um, let's see. No, uh, actually, it's seven five seven Zulu Zulu. He's going back to uh, where is that? 
Victor, Victor Charlie he Bravo. Just checked in. He just checked in, and then I gave him 5,500 midfield. That's all I know of him. He's VFR. Roger. Um, I don't. Oh, what's 1-1 one, one for uh, Kilo November? Day? He's not in your airspace, is he? Uh, no. He's at 20, yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any uh, questions? no questions. Your control air. INSP, thank you. Dom, I don't have United 2005. I think you have it. Uh, I can't. I don't have any. Your... Oh, well, you I don't know who it. has it. Somebody has it. One of the centers has it. <laughs> and that's a your scope thing. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's not me. Dom, how do I flash these guys to you as well for a center, like American 590? A, A, D, or is it A, B? A, B. And either center works. To the sectorization. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you, I believe you have a ZOA map. For me, it's eight. It should be in there. Remember, we talked about that, Sky. Uh. Okay, we're good or no? I mean, besides that, United 2005. So do you have control of the horizon and everybody else? You got to crank them back out, Trevor. It's I know. I'm, I I don't know why I don't have simulation on those guys. Or I have simulation, but I don't have... I don't know why they're not... Who's tracking them? It's it's your scope. Yeah, and I, it, I can't see that because it was handed to... Yeah, I can't do that, So I'll turn them out. Okay. Give me a manual hand off. Practice that. All right, let's All right. play. All right, uh, Pack Valley is Pack Valley to Tower. Oh, crap, I didn't ask. Well, Pack Valley 7650, if you're with me, uh, contact Capital Tower 125.7. See you. High Tech uh, 3546, turn left, heading uh, 110 to 7, maintain 6,000, heading 110. High Tech uh, 3546. Project Sky is 5085. Can we get on course? Uh, Sky is 5085. Proceed on course. Climb maintain flight level 190. 190. Sky is 5085. We filed 15,000 for this week. Uh, Sky is 5085. Sorry about that. Uh, climb maintain 15,000. 15,000. Sky is 5085. American uh, 590 contact open center 127.9 or 5 C. American 590 2795. Exojet uh, 767 turn left heading 270. Yeah, we're in the turn now. So, Exojet, or, uh, Exojet 767. Roger. Fucking thing. Kill the Pack Valley, please. What about him? Kill him. He's doing some whack. Uh, okay. Check the, uh, can I say something or check? What? I was just going to say Exojet's a little bit low. Yeah, he can deal with it. Exojet 841 fly heading uh, 29 or, or 280, sorry, to some maintain 8,000. 280, and you said 8,000 Exojet 841? Hear back, read back, let's go. Oh, Mickey's Why is dead air? Sky, are you there? Pause the problem, please. Or actually, don't pause it, just get those guys. Uh, I've tried with Exojet like five Exojet times. So he keeps turning uh, like five, turn five degrees at a time. 280, Two eighty eight thousand or uh, six thousand exactly eight forty one. What altitude did you issue him, Scott? Uh, eight thousand. So the, the pilot read back. I didn't hear it. Well, why weren't you? That's the entire job of an air traffic controller. That's fine. Um, if you don't hear it. And you know you missed it. You know there, there's like a fine line between you know you heard it, but you weren't sure. You can always say Exojet 341 
for my confirmation, it's going to maintain 6,000. Or you don't okay. have to add that my confirmation bar. Just say, you know, this is going to maintain 8,000. Okay. Right? Because you'd rather that than him reading it back wrong and you did not catch him. And... Right. Okay. Keep scanning. What are we doing? Uh, let's see. High tech thirty five forty six. Does I maintain four thousand? Fly heading uh one one zero. All right, heading one one zero, and I think you said five thousand. High tech thirty five forty six. Uh, high tech thirty five forty six. Does I maintain four thousand? Four thousand. And what was the heading one more time? I'm sorry. Heading I'm like just ca catching back. Uh. I take 3546 fly heading 110 uh, to send maintain 4000. 4000 110 heading, got it. Why four? Uh, I was going to get him on Yoshi. What get him approach on the are we getting? Okay. Oh, United, uh, 2005. You're a little high there. Uh, turn right heading 270. Uh, he never checked in. He's still with center. Oh, okay. Kill him, please. I'm just going to kill him because I can't control it. Can I just restart the entire problem? Sure. Uh, Dom, do you already have a Skywest 5085? Uh, not sure if it auto-tracked me or... It Sure. Uh, let's say, what area are you trying to hand up, or what sector? Sky. Are you? Uh, you're not running your. Uh, are you running as admin? Are you running Discord and as an admin? Sky, you can hear me, right? Because I can't differentiate if you heard me or you're thinking or. I'm pretty sure he's not running Discord as an admin or his internet's dropping out. Yes, yeah, so now we can hear you. You're not running as an admin, are you? Every time you click out, it stops working. So go quit Discord and run it as an admin. Yeah, I don't think it's that because I've been having connection pro like uh, connection drops and things like that um, on my PC. So I'm not exactly sure, but I can try that. All right, keep running it as if there's no arrivals right now. Keep, there's still departures to be worked. So Sky's 5085, who, who's he handing off? Okay, uh, Sky's 5085 is off to center. Oh, really? Try again. Did you hear me, Sky? Next up. Sky? I think that's... He's gone. Anthony, you're up. Use the, uh, use the thing. I'll, um... Are you going to pass? I'll go after, I'll go after uh, Ro Rowan. I'm just uh, sorting out one more. Dude, I literally just got so Rowan's to... coming up, or... Oh yeah, Ron, you're up. Did he say anything? Ron, you there? You can't hear you. Yeah, you're not your voice at all. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my thing. I just cut out and then um my scope went crazy. I can't I couldn't hear Discord for a hot minute. Alright, well, someone has to control, so someone can... Skywest 5085, contact NorCal 
3395 for scouts for the 85. Project Silas 1557 is uh, just going direct front. Sky or Southwest uh, 1559, climb maintained, flight level 1, enter 0. Can you do departure stuff? Yeah. Departure status 1557 with you. Sky 1557, NorCal departure, climb uh, and maintain flight level 1, enter 0. Departure status 1557, uh, how do you. Do you guys not have me? Yeah, we have you. Yeah, Sky 1557, climb and maintain flight level 1, enter 0. Uh, one nine zero have been confirmed for Southwest fifteen fifty seven. Yeah, Southwest fifteen fifty seven. Southwest fifteen fifty seven one nine zero. Call sign right. First you said yeah. Skywest fifteen fifty nine. Then you said fifteen fifty seven. Really? You said Skywest. You said Southwest. Right. Two different. Okay. Run, did you get those tracks or no? Or yeah. Southwest? Um, okay. I have Southwest 1557. No, 319, because I'm getting the flash, but I shouldn't be. Do you want it? 319. It Northwest on the East Slammer. Yeah, why don't you flash him to me? So, what altitude is Southwest 1557? He's at 4,400. Says who? Oh. Southwest 1557. Uh, what is it? Southwest 1557. Uh, say altitude passing. Uh, we're through uh, 5005 now. Southwest 1557. Southwest 1557. Did you see radar contact? Dude, I give up on that. Southwest 1557. Radar contact. Altitude indicates climbing through 5,200. Check or er, check altimeter. Uh, local altimeter 3001. Uh, so again, the last digit, Southwest 1557. We didn't catch that. We we're passing the 6,200. Skywest 1557. Uh, sac capital altimeter 3001. 3001. Southwest 1557. We'll set the So the proper phraseology for that is Southwest 1557, capital uh, capital altimeter 3001, verify altitude. Because in that situation, okay, thanks 3001. Did you actually verify as mode C, and was that was that correct mode C? Yeah. No. Right. So we know the difference between radar identification and mode C, right? Those two have nothing to do with each other. Okay. Roger Southwest or Delta 1651, 1800, we're climbing via the Sacktown 2 to 9. Delta 1651, uh, South 2 passing? Uh, 2000, Delta 1651. Oh my god. Southwest 1557, or. I don't even know anymore. I can't even fucking do this. Uh, Delta 1651, uh, say altitude passing. 2400, Delta 1651. Delta 1651, climb maintain, or radar contact, climb maintain, uh, one, or fly level one, enter zero. One, enter, Delta 1651. Let's pause right here. So, you looked at the conflict, right? I know you did, because you said Southwest 1557, right? But then you stopped. What made you stop? I don't know. Well, maybe, no, tell me. There's, it's not, I don't know. It's what first came up in your mind that made you analyze it, look at it, and then make. I don't accept, I don't know as an answer. It was an issue, and I just didn't go about handling it. Okay. So, yeah. should you handle it, or should you still should. go on that path of not? 
how how would you handle it? Uh, Southwest or traffic alert Southwest 1557 traffic is at your uh, 12 o'clock less than three miles uh, altitude uh, altitude indicates uh, 7,000. Uh, you should climb and maintain uh, nine or climb maintain uh, nine thousand immediately. Uh, nine thousand now. Southwest fifteen fifty seven. Southwest fifteen fifty seven. Climb maintain flight level one hundred zero. One hundred zero. Southwest fifteen fifty seven. It's not a problem anymore. Okay, so the advise part, you know, the advise you climb and maintain so and so, and the and the uh, other part or that part itself is not mandatory, right? Yeah. So it'd be traffic alert, Southwest 1557, uh, three o'clock, less than three miles, altitude in case 7,500, type of no maneuvering. And that's about, I would stop just right there. Cause you're already climbing at 19, right? You can yeah. still advise you climbing tain full 100 zero immediately. Okay. Right. But other than that, it's fine for that. And in that situation, you could foresee, you know, any traffic in his area. That guy has been orbiting for a while. And then it, what would you do in that case if that were to happen again? But you were, you caught it 30 seconds before that. Um, I would probably uh, have probably put the, other, put the other guy on a heading or something like that. The southwest? Think, yeah, the southwest. Okay. And you vector him out, climb him up, right? Yeah. Because you were so worried about the whole, I told you about the whole mode C stuff, and then you're like, oh, crap, mode C. Yeah. I, somebody else is on Sweatbox unpausing this, so I don't know who it is. Unless it's you. No, I'm using AC. not going to go well. In NorCal, even in Pack Valley 7650, is uh, 7,000 like the uh, destination change to Rick to uh, Oroville for uh, for package handling. Uh, Pack Valley 7651, or excuse me, Pack Valley 7650. You are cleared to the Orville Airport uh, via radar vectors. Uh, maintain 7000. 7000 radar vectors, Pack Valley 7650. NorCal Hawaiian uh, 20 Heavy is checking in 14 7 and setting a 7. We have the ATIS. Uh, Hawaiian 20 Heavy turn. Uh, left heading uh, three four zero to send and maintain uh, send and maintain four thousand. Okay, uh, three forty heading down to four Hawaiian twenty. Who are you? He's the first check on right. Yeah, Hawaiian twenty heavy NorCal approach. Right. And and you told him what approach to expect right? I... No, I did not. Hawaiian twenty okay. heavy expect uh, visual runway one six right. Yep, so make it into one yeah. uh, one instruction, right? Hawaiian 20 heavy, our cattle approach shutter, turn left heading 340, vector visual approach 216, right? Do you send maintain, right? One yeah. instruction like that. So, Trevor, you you do have control of these planes, right? No, absolutely not. They're That's fucking the just doing all sorts of crazy shit. I hate Euroscope. Okay. Um, I can't tell if they're descending via. It's like I don't have enough time. To... Southwest 1667 is descending via. 1061 is stuck at 24. Turn plane? Huh? Do you turn plane? Barely, but yes. Turn Hawaiian like 20 to 40. Like my one suggestion, Dom? Yeah. Um, only because like, I do training at work. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm mind fucked. Um, are you doing this again? Yeah, let's do this uh, again tomorrow, same time. Have everyone. What does everyone yeah, say? Yeah, because. Uh, I'm going to write down these traffic advisory calls because obviously that's a phrase. I heard you do it before and you whipped it out like no tomorrow. 
and it's like clear to land obviously is an easy call to make but you need to start getting that in the mind so maybe do homework tonight as traffic advisory calls and then come back tomorrow and smash some kill the uh kill the scenario trevor thanks for your help yeah uh um, i'll see if i can get elliot to help me with it okay um so tomorrow the same time before you guys go uh where do i even start Everybody in the training chat, whoever that, um, where'd that go? Oh, training chat, and then under P. So NorCal stage two. From I know you guys are tired and and stuff, but from uh, right now to tomorrow and our session, I want everyone to start studying as much as you can on those PDFs. Right, what whatever. Or sorry, if it's a airport, nav aid, airway, geography thing, study those, right? Because then it's it's important. I know it's backwards and it's fucked because you guys came into learning um, radar procedures and all that without even learning airspace, right? Learning airspace, learning airports and all that should be your number one thing prior to you coming in here and doing that stuff in the first place. So let's get that done first there's no again there's no test on that that's just study study on your own time um and i'll be uploading area e material in the uh phraseology i'll up be uploading a phraseology docket for you guys it's just gonna be focusing on the 71 10.65 phraseologies and so it's not gonna have every like 700 pages it's gonna have pages ex uh, extracted from the 0.65 that are that has the phraseology in there for you to practice phraseology. So most of you guys, I'm, I'm still hearing uhs, ums, and stuff, which is fine. But just remember not to push a think, push a talk, right? Um, deliver those clearances. Everyone's working at a different pace, right? We, we've noticed every possible uh, type of controller in today's session, right? We've got a person who's spitting out too fast, thinking too fast, that ended up fucking himself. We got somebody else's just horrible phraseology, right? We got somebody else who uh, got okay phraseology hiccups here and there, but then not thinking what everyone's is lacking in common is thinking down the road, knowing your airspace. And that takes time, right? I can't harp on you guys for that, but then practice phraseology, listen, you know, monitor as much as you can um, to the real world and uh, listen how their cadence is going, right? Don't copy their phraseology by any means because their phraseology is trash. Right, so just take in their technique for one, for two. See how the traffic flows and their and their cadence, not the phraseology. Phraseology always refer back to the point sixty five for your phraseology, right? So those two items I want you guys to be actively doing and being proactive for these sessions is constantly study your space, your SOPs, and that stage two stuff. Any other questions uh, for me before we part our ways? I mean, whoever still wants to control, I can come up and monitor them on. Or, or something, but I don't foresee anyone who wants to do that. Are there any arrivals? Yeah, we can build traffic, but I don't see. I'll traffic. go later. I am. I've got to do a couple of things, but okay. I'll do it in like an hour. hour okay, so. let's do that. So whoever wants to do it now with me can do it now, and then Anthony can come with me. Anyone? Um, I can go for a little bit right now. Okay. Any questions for me? I know it's a lot of information to, to take in, but then the expectation was you guys are supposed to know a little bit of airspace, a little bit of phraseology and concepts, right? I hope I answered a lot of the basic questions to refresh your minds. I mean, your guys' training was very recent. You know, March 17th, March 16th, uh, Doug put in some some hours in there, right? And it's hard work, uh, hard earned hours of his time uh, for you guys to be at a certain level. And that's what we expect you to be uh, by the end of this is to not perfect, but then get enough adequate controllers who knows their airspace and not put two plays together. Okay, no questions. You guys are free to go. Thanks for being part of this. We'll meet back again here tomorrow again, same time. If anything changes, you can.